guys here with a new video for the channel i hope you like it and if you like it don't forget to leave your powerful like supreme god level comment and subscribe now without further ado get comfortable let's begin five years had passed since the end of the tournament of power in which all the universes were in absolute peace nevertheless old gods had been eliminated by xenosam in the same way had returned to life thanks to the desire that android 17 had asked the dragon balls at that time, the great Xenosum had granted Goku the position of Supreme Destroyer God, but Goku with his friendly personality would reject it immediately. However, it was convincing him that since the same Daishenken Sum was going to offer him a great training, when he is able to overcome the power of both Guardians of Xenosama, this would excite too much to the Saiyan, which accepted with the only condition of not destroying planets where beings of good heart inhabit. With that condition is the only one that I'll become the supreme god of destruction. Alright, I accept your condition, my friend Goku. But this didn't please both guardians who did not believe that a mere mortal would put conditions on a king at all. That miserable mortal doesn't deserve the position of supreme destroyer god. Thank you very much, friend. And tomorrow, I'll communicate with Daishenkin-sama to go to your palace. Alright, I trust you, friend. Goku would spend that day with all his family and loved ones since the training that he would carry out would take a long time, because to be named a supreme god, he had to be able to face all the gods at the same time and defeat them without any difficulty. On that day, Goku would eat his favorite foods, and the next day, he'd say goodbye to all his family and would communicate telepathically with the great priest. Daishenken sama, I'm ready. Ready, Mr. Goku. I will go pick you up right now. Daishenken at that moment opened a portal to planet Earth, arriving in a few seconds. I hope you're ready, Mr. Goku, because the training you will be doing is one of the most complicated trainings. I'm ready. I'll do what's necessary to increase my power and be able to protect my family. Goku and Daishenken would arrive to the Kingdom of Everything. At the moment of arrival, Goku would greet both Xenosamas. After talking for a few minutes, Goku was ready to perform his great training. Lord Goku. Your first training will be to master the Ultra Instinct in its entirety, and defeat the Guardians of Xenosama. Okay, Daishenkin-sama. At that moment, Goku and both Guardians would begin to train in the outskirts of the Kingdom of Everything. Both Guardians were not at all happy to have to train this mortal. However, they were the orders of Great Xenosama, and after a few weeks of training, Goku was able to reach the Ultra Instinct, but he wasn't able to master it 100%. You have to try harder, since your power is still very low, so you'll never be able to be the Supreme Destroyer God. I'm trying my best, but you guys are too fast. I'm not able to keep up with you. After a few weeks, the Saiyan was able to reach the Ultra Instinct to dominate it at will. However, from that moment, his power began to have a slow increase of ki, that is, unlike before, which could overcome its limits with ease, this time he wasn't able to take his body beyond the limit. What's wrong with my body? Why can't I increase my powers anymore? What's wrong, Mr. Goku? Your process has slowed down considerably. Are you not comfortable with training of both guardians? I don't know what's wrong with my body. I can't increase my powers anymore. If I do, it's very minimal form. If you continue with this performance, I'm afraid to tell you that you won't be suitable for the position of the Supreme Destroyer God. I understand, Daishenkin-sama. Don't worry! Goku at that moment would accede to the Ultra Instinct starting to train with both Guardians again. However, after one more month, Goku's power had increased in a significant way. That's right, it seemed not to have increased at all. Daishenken sama, it seems that this is my limit as a Saiyan. I'm not able to do anything else. I understand, Mr. Goku. Don't worry, just tell Xenosama and I'll leave him on planet Earth right now. Goku at that moment would say goodbye to Xenosama and ask for an apology. But as Goku is the best friend of the King of Everything, nothing would happen. Xenosama would tell him not to worry that this usually happens sometimes, but not to give up and continue training on planet Earth. Daishenken at that moment would open a portal taking Goku back to his home, however both Guardians were very upset because the sand had made them lose their valuable time. When Goku arrived to planet Earth, he was very thoughtful in questioning why his power was not increasing as before. So at that moment, 
Goku was going to the planet of Beerus where he felt the key of Vegeta to ask him about the limits of the Saiyan race. Goku would use his teleportation to arrive in quickly. Hello, Mr. Whis, Mr. Beerus. Have you been all this time? Oh, but it's Mr. Goku. I understand that the High Priest was going to be in charge of training him. What happened? Knowing Goku's potential, he's already mastered all the techniques that the High Priest taught him. That's why he's the most powerful warrior in the Universe 7. Goku at that moment a little sad would deny everything Beerus said. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Beerus, but it's not like that. It didn't happen. But since I was able to master the Ultra Instinct, my power didn't increase as before. Beerus at that moment would be very surprised since it seemed that Son Goku's power had reached its limit and wouldn't be able to increase it in the great way it used to. But at that moment, an incredible power would be felt all over that place. That's right, the great power belonged to the Saiyan Vegeta who had accessed Ultra Ego. I felt your key, but I didn't think it was you. The key is very weak compared to before. Are you hiding it? No, Vegeta, that's why I'm here. I don't know what happened, but I'm no longer able to increase my power. Vegeta at that moment would be surprised that he would even return to his base state. What did you say? It can't be possible. The power of a Saiyan knows no limits. I thought by training with the High Priest, you'd be able to reach an amazing level. Well, 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 Mr. Goku is telling us it seems hard to believe, but it seems to be the reality. Something must be going on with your Saiyan cells, because I'm even now able to increase my power much faster than before. Goku, much more depressed, would return to planet Earth to try and understand everything that was happening. However, after all this had a logical explanation, so it is, in the five years that had passed, the six ancient gods had been commissioned to investigate how it was that they came back to life. Realizing the incredible power of Son Goku, that he had been able to master an angelic technique at such a young age, the most powerful god of the six had the order to seal the advance of the Saiyan. At the moment, he had reached the Ultra Instinct to not raise suspicions, even manipulating the Guardians to damage his energy veins at the same time of training. It seems that everything is going perfectly. A Saiyan named Goku is no longer able to increase his power. With the seal that we have put on him, and even the Dazalma Dragon will be able to help him. I think this is excellent. That Saiyan was the only K-1 capable of doing something against us, since he is able to increase his power quickly. Returning to planet Earth, one of the ancient gods were flying over the planet and without warning would charge a gigantic attack, which would be able to reduce the Earth to simple cosmic dust. Goku, realizing such a bestial attack, would quickly access the Ultra Instinct, and using a large part of his power, was able to deflect such overwhelming power. But the explosion created would be felt by the deities of Universe 7, even by Vegeta, which would quickly head towards the planet Earth, which was the place where the power came from. Who the hell are you? Why do you want to destroy the planet Earth? So you are the Saiyan that reached the Ultra Instinct. I thought you were on the planet of the useless Beerus, but I will have some fun with you. Toe at that moment would begin to move at an overwhelming speed, starting to give a rain of blows to the Saiyan, who was able to dodge each one of his blows with great difficulty. Well, even though you have sealed the advance of your power, you're still a very powerful being. What do you mean? You've sealed my power? What do you mean you- Wow, so you still don't know. I'll explain it to you quickly. We are the ancient gods, or better known as the rebel gods. We were erased by the kings of everything. But about five years ago, we came back to life. Damn it, it came back to life because of the wish I made on the Super Dragon Balls. But tell me, why did they seal my power? We ancient gods have thought of ending the life of every divine being. But you were the only hindrance, since your power increased in an amazing way. So we decided to seal it with the master of the Ultra Instinct. Damn it, for that reason, I'm no longer able to increase my power. I swear that even with this power, I'll finish you off. At that precise moment, the deities of Universe 7 would arrive and would quickly recognize Toa. But what the hell? If you're Toa, the goddess destroyer of the Universe 5, how the hell are you here? Well, if it isn't Beerus, the laziest god among the 18. Beerus annoyed would throw himself against Toa. However, Toa, taking the battle much more seriously, began to exchange blows with Beerus, which Beerus would get hurt in an exchange. While this was happening, Goku would tell what happened with his power to Whis, who would be very surprised by what Goku said. Mr. Goku, 
What you have just told me is of utmost importance. If even the ancient gods fear your power, it's because you are destined to be an extremely powerful warrior. Avenge us. What do you mean by that, Wiss? That goddess is even more powerful than me. I know that even if we fight together, we have no chance of winning. But you will be the one to finish them off. I'll send you to Universe 6 to the planet Saldala. No, Wiss, wait! Wiss at that moment would send Goku to fly at an amazing speed, even being able to cross the universal barrier that existed between each universe. At that moment, Vegeta would access the Ultra Ego, releasing the power to the max. I don't care that you're even more powerful than an angel. I'll not die without a fight. At that moment, Vegeta would communicate telepathically with Goku. Kakarot, the most amazing warrior I've ever met. I hope that when this is all over, you'll revive us. I'll be training in the other world. And I want that battle that we never had. At that moment, Vegeta and Whis rushed against Toa, which without any effort, just with the life of each of them, including the planet Earth, at that time that Goku arrived at the planet Sadala, was unconscious and very badly injured. But Khalifa would find him realizing that it was the Saiyan of Universe 7. Wow, but if you're the old man of Goku, I don't know what you're doing here. But you're very serious. I'll help you heal your wounds so that you can train me. Khalifa would take the body of Goku, leaving that place. Khalifa had been able to find Goku, taking him with her. At that moment of arriving to Khalifa's lair, she would lie him down on a bed so that he would be able to heal all his wounds. However, at that moment, Kale would arrive, being very surprised to observe the most powerful Saiyan of the 12 universes in those terrible conditions. Sister Khalifa, what happened to Mr. Goku? How is it possible that the most powerful Saiyan of the 12 universes is in that condition? I don't know, Kale, but the being that did this to him must be an extremely powerful subject, since he was able to defeat the old man Goku, and he has mastered a technique that even the gods wish to master it. Sister, we better call Kaba. He must know what we can give to Mr. Goku so that he can recover. Excellent idea, Kale. Go look for that good for nothing. Kale at that moment would go away at a great speed. That's right, all the warriors of the 12 universes at the end of the Tournament of Power had continued with their training to be able to be one of the strongest universes. So the strength, speed, and endurance of each of them had increased in an amazing way. At that moment, Kale would arrive accompanied by Kaba, which in the same way would be very astonished to realize the conditions that Goku was in. What happened to Mr. Goku? We don't know, but we have tried to pass energy to him and his body rejects it. We want to know if you had some kind of medicine that could help him. The only one that has that kind of medicine is Hit, a legendary assassin. We were partners in the Tournament of Power, so I doubt he'll refuse to communicate with you. Because if this old man dies, I won't be able to reach the Super Saiyan Blue. Cab at that moment would start trying to communicate telepathically with Hit, succeeding in doing so. What the hell do you want, Kaba? I haven't heard from you since the tournament ended five years ago. It, please help us. We have Mr. Goku's body here on our planet and it's in a fatal condition. If we don't do something here, he'll die. Hit, just like everyone else, would be very surprised because Son Goku even surpassed his power. At that very moment, I'm heading there. Hit was on a planet doing one of his jobs as a mercenary, so he killed the planet's boss with a lethal blow to the heart and quickly set off across the universe until he reached the planet of the Saiyans. What happened to him? How could a being as powerful as Goku be left in this condition? Hit would be taking out some spheres, something unusual. However, at that moment, he would eat them, being vain since Goku's body did not respond and he didn't be able to eat anything. Damn it. It's my turn to give him the divine water. Hit at that moment would take out a beautiful bottle and would throw a large amount of water in the mouth of the Saiyan. What was that, Hit? It is divine water. One that I've collected in one of my many missions. But this has been the best reward that I've obtained, since it is able to heal any wound, no matter what divine rank it possesses. At that moment, Goku began to vomit too much blood. That's right, being able to even stain the entire floor. However, after a few moments, Goku would be out of his combat again. Hit! Was that a good or a bad sign? I really don't know, Khalifa. It's the first time something like this has been happening. A few days would pass, however, Goku's body would show no signs of life. Meanwhile, in Universe 7, everything was totally destroyed. Or better said, everything was at a complete atom. Since there was no planets or galaxies, everything had been destroyed by Toa. How boring. 
I'd better go back to my other companions. I have nothing interesting to do in this place. Toe at that beginning of the moment would be at incredible speed, gathering in Universe 18, which was the most powerful of all. At the moment of Ryan, a, a being of extremely intimidating appearance would stand in front of Toa. Toa, you have eliminated all of Universe 7, but have you eliminated the Saiyan? No, I haven't eliminated him since the damn angel was able to send him to another universe. But we should worry, since his power is sealed. The guy named Akuma would expel a large part of his power, making Toa very nervous. That's right, the power he was releasing was amazing. Damn it, Toa. I warned you that with a Saiyan race, you shouldn't trust. All right now, I want you to go back and finish off that damn Saiyan. We can't fail this time. As you command, Akumo-sama. I'm so sorry. I'll finish off Son Goku quickly and come back. At that moment, Toa would return precisely to Universe 7 and begin to follow some trace of Goku's energy. But it would be useless since his key had completely disappeared. Meanwhile, with Goku, he still didn't wake up, but his whole body began to be filled with a great amount of energy. That's right, without anyone noticing, Goku's body was accumulating an incredible power. Since the substances that Goku expelled from his body weeks ago was a demonic paradise, which infested and destroyed the energy veins of its bearer, leaving him completely useless in the battlefield. But when Hit granted him the divine water, he was able to expel every particle of the seal that the ancient gods had placed on him, starting his energy to run through his body normally, and even the power of that before he had not been able to release, with the training of Daishenken and the Guardians this time, was flowing. Returning to the ruins of Universe 7, Toa at that precise moment would feel a small essence of Goku's power. So, you're still alive. Apparently, you're a somewhat difficult subject to finish. But now, with my own eyes, I'll witness your damn death. Toa at lightning speed would begin to move across the universe, being able to cross the universal barrel of Universe 7 to 6. At the time of doing so, would quickly reach the planet of the Saiyans, where the essence of Goku was even more powerful. So you are hiding in this damn place. Miserable mortal, your time to die has come. Toa, at that moment, with his great power, would be able to create a powerful dragon attack which was heading quickly towards the planet, but a powerful attack would be able to counter it. Mythical Dragon Killer. A similar dragon of power would come out of Hit's entire body, starting to collide with each other, but at that moment, both attacks would scatter into thousands of lightning bolts. Wow. What do we have here? A being that proclaims himself as an assassin. <laughs> How interesting. I don't want anything from you. If you want to give me the saying hiding in that house, I'll leave without destroying anything. Not at all. So you're the one who left Goku in that condition. Because of him, I'll defeat you. Because thanks to him, we have all come back to life. Hit and Toe at that moment began a close battle which could not be seen a clear winner. However, the powerful assassin was overshadowed by the power of the goddess Toa, which in each exchange of blows increased much more in power, beginning to cause great damage to Hit. In a moment, Hit would be able to use his jump in time, taking a little distance to communicate telepathically with Khalifa. Khalifa and Kale, get out of this place. This goddess wants to kill Son Goku. It must be for an important reason. We can't let her kill him. Keep giving him this to him. Hit at that moment would throw the divine water at both girls, and at that moment, he would use time jump again, but at an extreme level which had taken away 50% of his current power, being able to send the three warriors far away from that planet. It doesn't matter if you finish me off, Goku is safe now. Damn worm, you're nothing compared to me, and you have been able to make me angry. I will play with you until you confess to me where you sent son Goku. The three warriors had arrived to an inhospitable planet in which Khalifa would again make Goku drink the divine water. But this time, nothing would happen. That's right, Goku would remain unconscious. Kale, I can't let him fight alone. Because if he falls, all the beings of Universe 6 will fall with him. We must do something. I'm ready, sister. We'll become very powerful, and if we make the fusion, we'll be able to face him. Kale and Khalifa at that moment would make a fusion, giving birth again to Kelfa. and at a great speed would go towards the battlefield observing Hit in a terrible condition. Unable to do anything, Kelfa at that moment would give him a great kick, 
when realizing that Toa had been able to cover herself in spite of attacking her from his, her blind spot. Damn it, Kelfa. Even though you fused, you won't be able to do anything. I don't care about that. I'm not going to run away like a coward while my capital is being completely humiliated. You are a true Saiyan. Hidden Kelfa at that moment would rush towards Toa, being able to give him a few blows. However, for the goddess, those blows wouldn't have had any effect. Starting to attack in the same way, but the blows that she connected to both warriors caused an incredible damage. At that moment, Toa would increase power to 45%. I was never forced to use more than 50% of my power with you, but now I will finish with every planet in this universe, so that Son Goku will also die. Toa at that moment would begin to gather a great amount of energy, however, Hit and Kelfa would not be left behind, since at that moment both would launch an attack to prevent him to finish the charging of his definitive technique. However, each attempt would be useless. Divine Destroyer! Universal Annihilation! At that moment, a great sphere of energy would come out of Toa's hands and would take a form of a golden dragon. That's right, the attack was so powerful that even everything around him would be destroyed. Hit and Kelfa launch their most powerful techniques, but the dragon will pulverize them completely. It seems that this has been our end. If we have to die, we'll die together with the pride of a warrior. At that moment, that powerful dragon was about to hit them. At his back, he would hear a resounding, Hit from the Heavenly Dragon! Divine Annulment! At that moment, an incredible silver-colored dragon would be able to be observed and reduce Toa's powerful attack to simple atoms. But Goku's attack would not end, since the Great Dragon continued towards Toa, who at that moment was dodging it would be surprised to witness how the dragon would do the same and would hit her directly. And Toa had to use 70% of all her power to not be so affected by this incredible attack. Who the hell was it? A guardian angel? Since that attack was on an angelic scale. At that moment, you could see Goku's silver eyes with a very serious look. Of course it wasn't an angel. It was me, a simple mortal. Th th this is impossible. Your power was sealed. No matter what you do, this place will be your grave. At that moment, Goku would return to watch Hit and Kelfa. Thank you very much for taking care of me all this time. Now, take care of the simple goddess. Toa was about to make a move, but at that moment, a great sword would fall from the sky, completely neutralizing her. Come Toa on. had been completely neutralized. That's right, Goku's power had increased in an amazing way. Toa, at that moment, would invoke hundreds of spears to kill son Goku. However, Goku was able to dodge each one of the energy arrows. No matter what you do, Toa, you won't have the power to finish me off. Even if I release my sword, you won't be able to do anything to me. It doesn't matter what you do. I'll finish you off, you damn insect. Toa at that moment would expel so much power, being able to cause a great explosion with which he would be able to destroy the back which had neutralized it. Toa at that moment, in spite of the dust raised, would rush against Goku, who was able to dodge each one of his blows without any difficulty. That's right, Goku had transcended the state beyond a god. Being able to dodge the attacks of the destroyer god of Universe 15, Toa furious at that moment would throw a large sphere of energy, but Goku, only with stretching out one of his hands, would make it disappear. How is it possible that you've become so powerful in such a short time? I have no explanation for what happened to me, but apparently the seal had been completely broken, and all the power that was sealed to me has returned. That's right, the power that I had gotten from Daishenkin some has returned. This can't be happening. It must be a nightmare. Yes, that's right. It's a damn nightmare. No one has been able to break free from the Supreme Seal. Remember that I'm the mortal who overcame the gods, and you are no exception! Goku at that moment launched himself against Toa, starting to give him some excellent blows, being able to cause him incredible damage to each exchange. That's right, the roles have been completely reversed since this time it was Goku who dominated the battle at all, and without any difficulty. At that moment, in a slight more secluded place, the merger had ended and would return to be Kale and Khalifa. How is it possible that Goku's old man has all this power? I don't know, Khalifa, but power is capable of killing us in a few seconds. I don't know, Hit. It looks like that woman just got a lot weaker. She's still just as powerful. If we get out of this energy field that Goku created, we would be crushed just by her simple pressure. 
And looks like that woman is weak, since Goku's power surpasses her by dozens of times. Goku would continue to humiliate Toa, to such an extent that Toa would choose to use 100% of all her power. I never thought I would use all 100% of my power, much less with a mere mortal, but I won't let you get away with it. Right now, I'll finish you off and you'll beg me to end your life. I want to see if you can do it. Since you can say a thousand things, but you'll have the power to defeat me? Ha! <laughs> I doubt it. You're no worse than an insect. Toa was much more furious, would raise her power to the max, reaching 100% of all her power, and at that moment, would throw herself against Goku, who, in spite of the fact that Toa had increased her power to the max, was able to dodge a furative blow. At that instant, Goku would begin to dodge each one of Toa's blows, and this, the only thing that made Toa more and more furious, was that he became more and more enraged. Damn it! Stay still! If you wanted me to stay still, I will! Let's see what you can do some damage with your best punch. Toa at that moment would smile and charge all her power in her fist. No, damn it. What are you supposed to do, Goku? Toa's powerful punch would be able to hit Goku directly, creating a great chaos around him, since the power had been so much that even rocks around him had been destroyed by the simple slingshot of air created by the blow. I'm finally done with you. That's what you get for underestimating me, you bastard. <laughs> I can see you're capable of destroying entire universes with amazing ease, but you're not capable of destroying a single Saiyan. Toa at that moment would take a few steps back, realizing that in front of her was a real monster who was capable of ending her life. That expression was what I wanted to see. You're terrified, confused, or both. You don't know how long I waited for you to see that. Toa, at that moment, would start to fly at a great speed trying to escape. Goku would remain standing at that place, but at that moment he would disappear in front of Toa and would collide with his chest. Don't think you're destroying my universe that has no consequences. Now, I'll be the one to finish you. Goku in that same instant would begin to give the beating of his life to Toa, which on this occasion was no longer able to defend herself. That's right, the power had increased in an incredible way, while the power of Goku was consistently increasing, Goku, after humiliating her after a few minutes, would throw a powerful attack which would send it throughout the universe. That's enough! Goku at that moment would stand in front of Hit, Khalifa, and Kale, and at that moment he would use teleportation and appear where Kaba was standing. Sir Goku has finally completely recovered. Goku at that moment would return to his base state, but this time he was much more serious because he knew that if he was confident, a much more powerful being would finish them off. Khalifa, since that battle, had been amazed with Goku. Goku, do you know why those guys want to kill you? I don't know, Hit, but we must increase our powers to be extremely powerful beings. At that moment, Goku, a little confused in the same way, would ask a few explanations of how he had arrived to the planet. Khalifa would explain everything that had happened. Goku, a little blushing, would smile since he had felt the attraction towards the sane woman. Goku, at that moment, would tell himself, What is this that I feel? I'd never experienced it before. Goku would give it importance, but the Saiyans had quite a unique connection, which would not be overlooked. However, this time they were all the much more greater danger, so they put aside what they both felt. It'll be better to train in rooms designed for the training of a god or even an angel. I agree with you, Goku, but where are we going to get this kind of room? Don't worry about that. I trained with the High Priest, and at the time I wasn't able to master his techniques, but now I'm sure I'll be able to do it. Goku at that moment would begin to access the Ultra Instinct, beginning to raise his power to the limit. At that moment, with his great power and remembering the teachings of his master, was able to form two amazing rooms. This would leave much more captivated Khalifa with felt more and more adoration and love towards Goku. But Goku, why did you create two rooms? What do you plan to do? You hit! Being a legendary assassin, we'll train Kale and Kaba, and I'll personally train Khalifa. Hit didn't like the idea, but he'd accept anyways. At that moment, everyone entered the designated rooms. At the moment of entering, both sides without wasting time would train arduously. However, in the training that Goku and Khalifa that were taking, every moment were becoming much closer until a certain day arrived in which both would give each other a kiss for the first time. Time later, in which both had continued training in the same way, some years had already passed, which Goku and Khalifa became completely close, to the point of being sure of wanting to be together. Khalifa, 
I don't know what I feel, but I've never felt this way before anyone. Goku, neither have I. You're the first man I've ever felt this good with. You're very powerful. I love that about you. When this is all over, we can talk about what will happen to us. But for now, we have to increase our powers. I agree with you, Goku. Goku, in all that time I've been in that place, he'd been able to teach Khalifa all the divine transformations. Being able to make Khalifa reach the Ultra Instinct only when her body feels in total danger. He still didn't control it 100%. Meanwhile, with the training of Hit in both Saiyans, Kale and Kaba, in the same way, had managed to master the state of a god. Kaba accessing the Super Saiyan Blue, but in the case of Kale was something totally different. Because although his state was the legendary Super Saiyan, his hair color didn't change in the least. This is strange, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have increased your battle level. After two more years passed, and approximately eight days had passed since they entered the outside world, Toa in the space, very badly injured on the verge of death, would be able to communicate with Akumo. Akumo-sama, please help me. I'm on the verge of death, and I'm not able to regenerate myself since I don't have any energy. Akumo would say to himself, How is this possible? Did the angel and god of some universe attack her? No, but this is no logical reason since Toa's power is capable of wiping out any angel. At that moment, Akuma would come to his thoughts. Yester, immediately, go to the northern end of Universe 6 and bring Toa. It seems she's on the verge of death. But my lord, how is this possible? I don't know, Yester, but go immediately since Toa shouldn't have too much time left. Yester at that moment would disappear towards the point where Toa's energy was felt, which was about to disappear. At the moment of arriving, he would transmit a part of his energy, and in the same way, he would return quickly. At that moment of arriving, among the six rebel gods that began to pass him key, so that he would be able to recover the gift of healing. Nevertheless, one of the six rebel gods was bursting with anger. I don't know who the hell you are. But I swear that I'll finish with that damned one that has left my wife in these conditions. If you mess with her, I'll finish you, you miserable one. At that moment, the entire Universe 18 was engulfed in flames. Lightning, lightning, even the planets that were around them were turning into simple ashes. Cantor, calm down. We don't know what happened, and clearly we'll have revenge for this. But you must calm down. Meanwhile, in the special rooms, two days had passed, in which all the warriors would come out causing an incredible tremor through the 18 universes. Even such power would reach the entire realm. Whose powers are these? But two of them are the ones that stood out the most. In the 18th universe, Akuma would stand up. This power is of a punisher level warrior. At that moment, Toa would open her eyes, but had an expression of absolute fear and would start screaming. Those eyes! Those eyes! I won't forget those ice cold silver eyes. I don't want to fight him anymore. He's a monster. My dear, tell me who did this to you. I'll personally take care of ending his life. No, no one can. We should never mess with him. It was better to end his life instead of sealing his power. Back to Goku and the others. So, Toa has arrived with the other gods. I have a surprise for you. At that moment, Toa's body would begin to inflate like a balloon. Infernal explosion! A great explosion would be created all over that place where the rebel gods were. A great explosion would be created in all of the universe 18, because the body of Toa had been filled with an incredible celestial power, only waiting for the order of Goku to be exploded completely. At that moment, Akuma and Yamoshi were the only supreme gods which were able to react. At that moment, the other three gods had received such explosion, being very badly injured and on the verge of death. After a few minutes and the dust ended, blood was observed all around. Damn it! I swear we'll exterminate you! I'll avenge the death of my wife! You'll be no match for the first two Saiyan gods! At that moment, both rebel gods would launch hundreds of energy arrows towards the three gods who were about to die. I won't let her death be in vain. With her powers, we'll be able to still defeat that cursed one. At that moment, all the power of the three gods would begin to enter the body of both gods, which their energy veins were being filled with an overwhelming power. At that moment, Yamoshi would begin to transform, even surpassing his legendary state, which gave off an unreal power. 
while Akumo, to release a large part of his power, would create different disasters for all 18 universes. At that same moment, his power would also be felt by the great priest Daishenkin-sama. This power? No, no, this is impossible. The rebel gods were eliminated by the king of everything. This must be a damn nightmare. However, in that same instant, an incredibly amazing power would be felt by all the 18 universes. But unlike this disgusting power, the power that was felt this time was warm and angelic. That's right, Son Goku was releasing his power to the maximum, with which he would also leave Daishenkin-sama surprised. This is the very power of Lord Goku. I can't believe it. I thought he had reached his limit and for that very reason had left but his power now even equals the power of the rebel gods. Returning to Goku and the warriors of Universe 6 at that time, they had all achieved great powers in which even Goku and Hit were able to defeat the Guardian Angels, without any difficulty, while for Kale, Kaba, and Khalifa, it was a little difficult. I am very proud of all you guys! Now it'll be time for us to put an end to all this, since I only feel the power of two rebel gods. Their power must be amazing, since the explosion you created with your energy was on another level, and apparently the other three gods have died. That's right! My Goku's amazing! He'll be the supreme god of destruction! Goku at that moment would put on a very serious look. I don't want to be confident because the power of both guys is still rising in an amazing way. It seems that it has no limit. At that moment, a great roar would be made for all the divine beings falling to their knees. That's right, at this precise moment, all the powers of the three gods had merged completely with the power of both gods, which at that moment, with an ancient technique, were able to change dimension. And at that moment, their key would disappear. Apparently, those guys want to dominate all the power they've obtained, and I can deduce that they have absorbed the power of their companions. There they are, Goku. Are we ready to finish with those guys? Of course we are! They fear me, and with their help, nothing and nobody would be able to confront us. At that moment, a portal would be created in front of them. That's right, it was Daishenkin-sama. Master, long time no see! Goku, I can see you've recovered your ability to increase your power quickly. But tell me, what happened? Goku at that moment began to explain everything that had happened to Daishenkin-sama, who would be very surprised that it has been their plan to seal Son Goku's power. Goku, I've asked all the Destroyer Gods to stay out of all this, because even the Angels have been defeated by both Gods. Don't worry, Daishenkin-sama. This time we'll be able to defeat them. They won't stand a chance against us anymore. At that moment, Daishenkin would leave that place, a new portal would be created, and the energy was a negative one that was created in front of him, from which both Gods would come out. What? How is it possible that you trained in a matter of minutes? It was just minutes for you, but it is an ancient technique for a reason. In that place, we trained for 15 years. That's right! While we're in that place, it only took 15 minutes. We controlled all our powers in 15 years, and I'll make you pay for the death of my wife. Yamoshi at that moment would begin to increase his power to the maximum. The disasters he created were amazing, even leaving everyone surprised by the powers he felt. Daishenka would try to return, however at that moment, it was impossible, since both gods had created a powerful barrier, which no being had the necessary power to eliminate it. At that moment, Akuma would stand in front of Goku while Yamoshi in front of Hit. I'll finish you quickly. So between me and Akumo, torture that bastard. We'll make him beg for his life. Goku at that moment would begin to increase his power to the maximum. That's right, he did not plan to be confident. All the planets in Universe 6 began to be destroyed by such power. That's right, at that moment the power of Goku was increasing in an amazing way. That's right, Goku has accessed his most powerful transformation so far, making him return to his most primitive state. At that moment of a great explosion could be seen Goku in his transformation of Divine Super Saiyan 4. I'm even prepared to give my life to finish you. But in this battle, it'll be you two against us two. At that moment, Goku quickly turned around and stretched out one of his hands, throwing a great energy towards the three Saiyans who were not able to dodge that attack. However, at that attack was special because it was able to cross the barrier of the rebel gods. This battle be difficult. You must not die. Goku and Hit at that moment launched themselves against both gods, which started with a very even battle. 
However, even though Hit was using all his assassination techniques, it was not able to cause any great damage to Yamoshi, who in each exchange of blows was able to cause great damage to Hit. While Goku and Akuma were very evenly matched, both connected very powerful blows, which destroyed the few planets that remained of Universe 6. The power they're giving off is incredible. Even Xenosama wasn't able to do anything this time, and since their powers have increased in an amazing way. In that moment, Xenosama together with his guardians would arrive at Daishenken's side. This is a megaversal alert. The two most powerful gods are still alive, and apparently they have absorbed the power of the other gods. You're right. This time, the only one capable of doing anything against those gods is Son Goku. Returning to the battlefield, he was more wounded as the battle progressed. That is, he didn't have the necessary power to continue with the battle. However, at that moment, Goku was able to send Akumo to fly. With a great kick, he'd send Yamoshi to fly. Hit! Communicate with Daishinkin! Ask all the gods and angels to give you their power so that you'll be able to continue. Even though I'm very powerful, I won't be able to face both of them at the same time. But I'll be able to distract them for five minutes. I understand, Goku. Thank you for this opening you've given me. At that moment, Hit was beginning to communicate with all the divine beings so that they would give him some of their powers. At that moment, all the divine beings gave him a single drop of their energy sea. Yamoshi was the first to notice trying to stop him. However, Goku was not a warrior who can easily be defeated. That is, Goku was fighting a battle of both gods. Damn worm! Get this! Galactic Devourer! At that moment, an incredible power would come out of Yamoshi's mouth, which was directed towards Goku, who at that last second was able to use teleportation, appearing to the side of Kumo, managing to give him a sneaky blow while with the three Saiyans they were furious, because they didn't let them participate in this incredible battle. Damn it! Goku doesn't trust the power I've obtained! Khalifa, you're the most powerful Saiyan warrior I've ever met, and I'm sure it's not the reason, but we must trust Mr. Goku. At that moment, Hit was filling with amazing power. Goku was doing everything necessary to withstand against both rebel gods. However, his whole body was wearing out in an incredible way. At that moment, a powerful power had rumbled the entire Universe 6. At that moment, Hit was blasted with blows that could send flying hundreds of meters across the universe. Goku, use the same technique used against Jiren. I'll distract them enough. Because even with this power, I won't be able to defeat them. Got it, Hit. I'm counting on you. Goku at that moment would return to his base state, starting to gather a great amount of energy. That's right, Goku was forming the Genkidama. At that moment, all the beings of the 18 universes began to send great parts of their powers to be able to finish with the life of both supreme gods. Gods and angels, Son Goku needs our help. So let's give them all the power we can. Because if they fall, all the universes will be destroyed. At that moment, millions of energies began to form the ultimate technique of Goku. That's right, all the universes were sending their power to Goku. Son Goku, you have the most powerful warrior of all the universes. To you I entrust my power. Mortal of Universe 7, who will even become a supreme god, you have my full support. Get all the power of the destroyer god of Universe 11. That's right, all the gods and angels in the same way began to send their power. Goku's technique was increasing in size rapidly. While Hit was in a brutal battle between the two rebel gods, this time Hit was able to cause incredible damage to both beings. That's right, the power he possessed was unbelievable. Damn it, we must do something. Because if that guy completes his technique, he'll be able to finish this off completely. I agree with you, so we must finish this wretch off quickly. Both gods, in spite of using their maximum power, they were not able to overcome Hit's incredible defense. However, his power was decreasing every minute, and with this, the effectiveness of his blows was decreasing as well. At that moment, Yamoshi was able to connect a strong blow which would send Hit to fly to a planet being very badly wounded. On that, let Son Goku be interrupted. He must complete his technique. Hit at that moment again would throw himself against the gods, but this time he was no longer able to do anything. That is, Hit would fall to the ground on the verge of death. Without being able to do anything, both warriors at that moment would charge an amazing power, throwing it towards Goku. 
However, at that moment, something amazing would be observed throughout the universes. That's right, Goku is absorbing the power of Genkidama, raising his ki to incredible levels. So much so that even his power had disappeared for everyone. Goku had been able to take his power to the level beyond a king of everything. At that moment, Goku with his simple aura was able to disintegrate all the power of both gods. Thank you very much, 18 universes. And to you, Hit, that you gave me the necessary time to create my technique. Now you can leave the rest to me. Goku at that moment, without wasting time, would launch himself against both gods, starting to give them a great beating, which were not able to observe the blows of Goku since his speed was amazing. This power will not last long. It'll be better to finish them once and for all. Receive this, Divine Dragon God! At that moment, an incredible dragon of white color was able to be observed by all the universes, even destroying the barrier of the gods. Both gods would carry a power, but the attack of Goku was on another level, being able to destroy everything around him, even ending the life of the two beings more powerful than a king of everything. Finally, it's over! Tell me, what is your wish? I wish that you bring to life all the beings that the rebel gods killed. At that moment, the eyes of the Great Dragon would be unlimited, being able to bring to life even all the Z-Warriors. Xenosama, at that moment, would also name Goku as the new super god of destruction. At that moment, Beerus and Whis would also arrive. Mr. Goku, I congratulate you for your new position as super god of destruction. Kakarot always trusted you. You're a pride of our race. This is how Goku had become the new super god of destruction next to Khalifa, with whom he wished to have a full and lasting life. It was a normal day in the life of the inhabitants of planet Earth. People were eating in restaurants, walking with their families. There were children playing when suddenly a giant lightning bolt was seen in the sky that caused a strong movement throughout the Earth's surface. Buildings collapsed. People could not stand up. Windows exploded. All this resulted in car accidents and injuries. At the moment, a child was going to be pierced by a giant glass that fell from a building. Very close by, we see how a being that we cannot distinguish who it is flies through the skies at great speed, rescuing people who were in danger due to the strong movement. At the precise moment when the child was about to die, that being rescues him, seeing how a huge piece of glass explodes against the ground. We see how this hooded being stands up from behind, revealing that it was none other than Goku, who had been hidden for a long time because Daishenken and the angels wanted to see him dead. Goku, with a different appearance than the one we all know, after rescuing the boy is amazed by the energy that emerges from the earth to the sky. We could see how Vegeta arrives at the place where Goku is together with the Z warriors who were still saving people from the disaster. Vegeta looks at Goku face to face and says, Kakarot, insect, where have you been all this time? At that moment, Gohan and Goten arrive and tell him, Dad, where have you been? What happened to you, father? All this happened while Piccolo, Krillin, Trunks, and Android 18 were rescuing the people affected by the movement. After having finished saving them, they arrive to where they are reunited with Goku and look at him very surprised. In a head to toe scan, we can see Goku's face very emaciated, with wounds and pronounced cheekbones because he had not tasted any kind of food for a long time. At that moment, we go back in time about 20 years ago. We see how Goku and his son Goten are walking together in the forest. Goku, talking to his son, says, Hey Goten, are you ready to fish today? To which Goten replies, Yes, Dad. Will you show me the fastest way to catch them? Goku, happy for his son's enthusiasm, replies, Of course, Goten, but this time I'm going to try something different. Watch this. Goku dives into the water and after a short time comes out with a big jump with a huge fish moving on his hands. Goten, very surprised, says to his father, Wow, Dad, how did you do that? Goku, showing a very happy expression, says, When I was little like you, Goten, I had to find my own food in order to live. 
You should try to give it a try. Goten, very excited, says to his father, I'll try. And so Goten dives into the water to the joyful sight of his father, to which, on the first attempt, Goten fails to catch any fish. Seeing Goten's sad face, Goku encourages his son, saying, Don't worry, Goten. It's a matter of practice and patience. The key is to be quick and not scare the fish. So Goten dives in again, but this time it takes a long time to come out. When suddenly, Goku feels a very powerful key very close to where he was. Because of this, Goku worried about his son's dives in search of him. Once in the water, he sees Goten fainted and next to him a very strange artifact. Goku, worried about the state of in which he found his son, swims to rescue him. At the moment, he was about to lift his son in his arms, ready to go to the surface. The strange artifact begins to emit a very sharp sound that only Goku hears. Wu with a face of confusion and pain tries to lift his son, but suddenly the artifact comes off the ground and permeates his chest. Once on his chest, the artifact stops emitting the strange sound and Goku stops feeling the key of a moment ago. Goku does not take importance to what had happened to him and worried about his son. He lifts him up to get him out of the water. Once outside, Goku puts his son on the ground to revive him, but suddenly an unknown being appeared to him. This being had a greenish coat, blue hair with black tips, and it was a very strange appearance. But it did not seem to be something real, it looked like an illusion. Goku, upon realizing this being, became alert and put his son in good protection. After that, addressing the being, he asks him, Who are you? What do you want here? This being, without uttering a word, rushes at high speed towards Goku, who in an act of reflex manages to dodge the first blow. But the speed of the stranger exceeds him by far. Because of that, after dodging the first blow, the unknown being lunges with a kick to the head, which Goku barely manages to block, leaving his stomach exposed, where he takes the opportunity to impact a direct punch, automatically leaving Goku out of air, and thus returns to lunge with a blow to the nape of the neck. Goku, when he was about to lose consciousness, hears a voice in the distance that says, Apparently, this is my best guest that could touch me. Saying this in a sarcastic way. I hope my colleagues are in good condition. After hearing these words, Goku faints. A few minutes after the fleeting confrontation, Goku regains consciousness and realizing that the unknown being was no longer in the place, he looks for Goten and when he finds him, he begins to unexpectedly and repeatedly call his name to make him react. Seeing that calling him had no effect, he feels his breathing and notices that he was almost not breathing. He creates an energy sphere in his hand and places it on Goten's chest. Once Goten revives the energy from his father, he reacts and spurts water from his mouth. Goten, with a puzzled expression, asks his father what had happened. To which Goku says, I have the same question for you. What happened? Goten tells him that at the precise moment, he was about to capture the fish he felt attracted to the artifact, which also tried to impregnate in his chest. At the time, Goten felt a strong source of energy that ran through every part of his body, which was very difficult to control, and felt how that strange energy weakened him until he lost consciousness and fainted. Goku and his thoughts, and that he also felt the same strange and very powerful energy running through his body, and worried about his son, asked him if he still felt that energy inside him. Goku calmly and a little puzzled told him no, that he only felt that when the artifact was trying to permeate him. While this was happening on Earth, Whis and Beerus went to the Kingdom of Everything to talk to Daishaken since they had noticed him very tense and worried. Once they were already in the Kingdom of Everything, Daishaken appears with a very serious expression while Whis and Beerus bow to him to show respect. Daishaken, relieved to see that Whis and Beerus were with him, tells them something very strange and dangerous is about to happen. Whis, with a puzzled expression, asks, what is it, father? We would noticed a certain tension in the air as we reached the realm of the whole. Beerus, yawning without realizing the seriousness of the fright, says to him, Trouble again? What well, could be so dangerous to make Daishaken so worried? Serious and worried the high priest? To which Daishaken replies, Yes, I'm afraid so. A powerful entity has resurfaced, once we have not faced in a long time. Wiss, with a very serious expression, says to him, An unknown entity? Uh, could it be one of the beings we left sealed away long ago? It is possible, Wiss. Its energies are as dark as they are disconcerting. I cannot identify the source with certainty, but its power is overwhelming. Beerus frowning says, Why should I worry about it? 
it's that strong, I'll go destroy it. Daishaki, with a very serious expression, explains, It's not that simple, Lord Beerus. This entity seems to have the ability to change even the most ancient gods. We cannot underestimate it. Wiz thoughtfully asks his father, How do you suggest we deal with this situation, father? We need to gather information before we act harshly. Wiz, Beerus, I trust you with the task of investigating. Find out all you can about this entity and any weaknesses you may have. Beerus, smiling confidently, exclaimed, Good, good. A little action won't hurt. Nodding, Wiss replies, We will be on our way, Daishenken, but be aware that if this entity threatens our universe, we will not hesitate to take drastic measures. I understand, Wiss. May wisdom guide your actions, and may you return with the information we need. <laughs> After that conversation, Wiss and Beerus depart for the hitherto unknown destination, while Daishenken watches with concern, aware of the gravity of the situation looming in the realm of everything. As they were on their way back to Earth to ask for Goku and Vegeta's help, Whis recalls that when they were on their way to the realm of everything, he sensed a very strong and dangerous key on planet Earth. Halfway through his quest in the universe, he stops and, confused, Beerus says to Whis, What's wrong? Why are you stopping? Wiz, very serene, says to Beerus, Oh, my dear Lord Beerus, it turns out on our way to the realm of everything, I detected a rather intriguing presence. Yawning, Beerus asks, A mysterious entity. We didn't need to get any of what Daishake had told us. As they flew on their way home, Goku tries to sense Vegeta's key so he could teleport with him as soon as he left his son with his mother, Chi-Chi. At that moment, we see how Vegeta was already gathered by the Z Warriors, Krillin, Android 18, Piccolo, Ten Shinjan, Chaos, Gohan, Future Trunks, and Master Roshi, who were talking about the strong and dark energy they had felt. <laughs> Goku and Goten arrive home, and his mother, worried because they had taken a long time to return, runs to Goten and says, Goten, son, are you all right? Goku, somewhat worried, nods and says, It seems so. The moment I rescued Goten, this artifact permeated my chest, and I began to feel the fact was underwater right next to Goten, who had fainted. As soon as I was approaching it, it emitted a very sharp sound that didn't allow me to get close to Goten. And being. Piccolo, observing the artifact, turns to Goku, saying, This looks familiar. It may be like a containment urn, like the ones we used at the Mafuba to seal powerful beings. Surprise, Goku. Really? Piccolo? Do you think this could be something like that? Krillin wouldn't look at the artifact. An artifact like this one, used with the Mafuba on Goku's chest? Since when did battles become so complicated? There's always something new with you Saiyans. Master Roshi, somewhat excited, but at the same time, Sirius exclaimed, Ah, Mafuba, I remember when we sealed King Piccolo with that. Do you think Goku has such a strong enemy inside? Future Trunks, analyzing what had happened, says, It makes sense. The Mafuba urns are powerful devices to contain evil energies. Could this artifact have sealed something? I don't care if it's from the Mafuba or anywhere else. I just want to know how to get rid of this thing once and for all. It's a possibility. The urns we use to keep very strong enemies under control. But why did it attach yourself to Goku? I'm not sure, but what I do know is that this energy is linked to a very powerful entity. Whatever it is, if it's linked to that artifact, we cannot underestimate it. So what do you plan to do, Kakarot? At that moment, the Kaiosama of the North telepathically communicates with Goku to tell him that he had information about the powerful energy that they felt and the mysterious artifact that permeated his chest. Kaiosama tells him to get to his planet quickly. First, we need information. Kaiosama has information about this artifact and the being that might be inside it. We must go to Kaiosama so we can find out what we're dealing with. Vegeta nods and Goku continues. Exactly, but first, I need your help. If there are any more entities like this, the Earth could be in danger. And with this connection to the artifact, I could put them at risk. Therefore, I'll only go to Kaiosama to get the information to get rid of this artifact. Kakarot, don't even think that you'll do this alone. I'll go with you, insect. I can't accept that you become stronger than me. Goku accepts and asks him to put his hand on his shoulder. Once Goku and Vegeta left, the Z Warriors sensed unknown presences on the planet, so they split into groups and flew off at high speed to go investigate. With the reevaluation that the artifact of Goku's chest might be like a containment urn, similar to those used in Mafuba, the Z Warriors faced an increasingly complex and dangerous situation. 
uncertainty about what such an artifact contains and how it is connected to the mysterious dark energy fills them with worry. While Goku and Vegeta were to where Kiyosama and the Z Warriors went to investigate the unknown presences they had detected in space, Whis and Beerus, after having transversed much of space, felt a strong amount of dark energy, so they immediately head to where it was. As they are about to reach the source of the dark energy, the pressure in the air becomes more intense as they get closer, and the unknown entity awaits their arrival. Why do I feel like this is going to be more complicated than we thought? Mr. Beerus, the information we gain here could be crucial to understanding the threat we face on Earth. The unknown entity, surrounded by a dark aura, reveals itself in front of Whis and Beerus. Its presence is overwhelming and a sinister laugh echoes in space. Unknown entity mockingly welcomes them, saying, I expected your arrival. You took longer than I expected. Do not underestimate the gods. We're here to stop any threat that endangers our universe. Before any confrontation, can you tell us who you are and what you're doing here? <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm known as Ryuk, disciple of the Devourer of Worlds. I have come to free the Master, the most powerful being who ever lived. The expression on Wiss's and Beerus' faces become much more serious upon hearing Raikou's name. Raikou, a name rings a bell. Raikou is an ancient threat, Lord Beerus. His master, he and the other disciples were sealed away a millennia ago due to his unquenchable thirst for power and destruction. So it looks like we have a problem. This time it won't be as easy sealing him again. The space fills with palpable tension as Ryuk, surrounded by a dark and malevolent aura, confronts Wiss and Beerus. The dark energy emanating from him seems to distort the very fabric of space around him. <laughs> problem, you say? You're correct, little god. The Master has been patiently awaiting your release, and now with my arrival, that time has finally come. Beerus moves into combat stance with a determined expression on his face, while Whis remains composed but alert. I have no time for games. If your Master is a threat, we'll stop you here and now. Tell us more about your Master. Understanding his motivations might help us find a peaceful solution. Ryu chuckles mischievously revealing his sharp fangs that disappears in a dark flash before reappearing behind Beerus with astonishing speed. There's nothing they can do to stop the Master's inevitable resurgence, but before that, they could entertain me. The battle begins, Ryuk throws a swift punch towards Beerus, but the Destroyer guy nimbly dodges and responds with an energy punch that Ryuk blocks easily. Meanwhile, Whis watches carefully, waiting for the right moment to intervene. Ryuk's speed is impressive but Beerus manages to keep up. They exchange blows and energy blasts in a combat that seems to defy the laws of space itself. Ryuk's dark energy distorts reality around him, making its impact more dangerous and intense. Oh, Beerus, your speed is amazing, but that dark energy is problematic. I suggest you be careful with your movements. Beerus nods as he dodges an enemy attack and counterattacks with an energy wave. Ryuk, undeterred, vanishes and reappears in front of Whis, challenging him to enter the fight. And you, sister of the god, will you dare to face me? Whis smiles serenely and disappears in a flash, only to reappear behind Ryuk. I have no intention of fighting, but if that's what you wish. Before Whis finishes his sentence, Ryuk turns around and launches his fierce attack towards him. Whis, with his extraordinary speed, dodges each blow with grace. The space convulsed with the fury of the cosmic confrontation between Whis, Beerus, and Ryuk. Each move shattered reality itself. As Ryuk's dark energy and the god's divine blast intertwined in a demonstration of opposing forces, Ryuk, as ominous figure shrouded in a dark aura, moved with breathtaking speed. The sinister left echoed through the emptiness of space, challenging the gods who faced him. This guy's faster than I thought. As Beerus' words fade away, Ryuka disappears in the blink of an eye and reappears in front of him with a punch charged with dark energy. Beerus manages to block the attack, but the force of impact sends shockwaves through space. Ryuk breaks away from Beerus with a smirk, and in a flash lunges towards Whis. His movements were fluid. Whis, on the other hand, moves gracefully, dodging each blow with the grace of a cosmic dancer. This dark power is intriguing, but it is out of balance. Ryuk, frustrated by Whis's evasive ability, concentrates his dark energy in his hands and launches it as a flare. Whis responds by creating an energy barrier, but the resulting collision sends shockwaves through space, shaking nearby stars. 
Beerus takes advantage of Ryuk's distraction and lunges at him with a punch charged with divine energy. Ryuk blocks the blow, but the resulting force causes an explosion that creates the ephemeral supernova in the cosmos. The fight continues with unmatched speed. Ryuk demonstrates his skill in anticipating the god's moves, while Beerus and Whis unleash their divine power to counter the darkness that threatens to engulf them. In a moment of pause, Ryuk grins mischievously and his dark aura begins to intensify. A transformation was underway. The darkness concentrates around his body, forming a sort of dark cocoon that breaks revealing a transformed figure. Now Ryuk has evolved. His previous form pales in comparison to the manifestation of his current power. His figure has become more imposing, with twisted shadows dancing around him as if they were extensions of his own essence. Sharp fangs glow with dark radiance, and his eyes emit a malevolent light. Ha ha ha! This is just a glimpse of my true power. Beerus and Whis exchange a worried glance. The pressure in the air becomes even more intense. Ryuk, now in his transformation form, launches himself towards the gods with outstanding speed. Beerus tries to counterattack with a sphere of divine energy, but Ryuk dodges each projectile with ease, moving through the bursts of light with supernatural agility. Meanwhile, Whis stands in reverse, watching the fight with analytical eyes. In a quick blink, Ryuk appears in front of Beerus and unleashes a series of vicious blows. The sonic sounds of punches and echoes kicked through space as the gods and devourer of worlds discipled plunge into a frenzy of combat. Beerus, struggling to keep up with Ryuk's speed, takes a direct punch to the stomach that sends him drifting into space. Before he can recover, however, Ryuk lunges at him and blasts him with a barrage of blows. The situation becomes even more complicated when Ryuk, in a ruthless act, concentrates dark energy in his hand and drives it through Beerus' abdomen. The Destroyer God lets out a roar of pain as darkness spreads from the point of impact. Whis saying the stark reality springs into action, his figure flashes in space as he stands in front of Ryuk, blocking his attacks. I cannot allow you to harm my lord in this way! Whis's divine energy collides with Ryuk's darkness in a show of cosmic power. The battle intensifies and the fate of the universe hangs in the balance as the confrontation between light and darkness reaches its climax. The confrontation between Whis and Ryuk intensified as space became the stage for their fierce cosmic battle. The clash of divine and dark energies echoed in the void of the universe, creating ripples that stretched to the far reaches of space. <laughs> You think you can stop me, Wiss? The master of divine martial arts, Wiss, maintained his serene composure as he resisted the onslaught of the Devourer of Worlds disciple. His divine aura glowed brightly, fighting against the darkness that threatened to envelop him. Wiss, with a wave of his hand, unleashed a blast of divine energy that forced Ryuk back momentarily. However, the smile on the dark being's face revealed that he was far from giving up. Ryuk. Your quest for power will only lead to destruction. Ryuk, releasing a sinister laugh, launched himself at Whis with renowned furiosity. Each exchange of blows was like a clash of titans, with the fate of the universe hanging in the balance. Meanwhile, Beerus was recovering from the wounds inflicted by Ryuk, watching the battle with critical eyes. The darkness that had pierced his abdomen was beginning to dissipate thanks to divine regeneration, but the experience had left an indelible mark. This creature is more formidable than I imagined. And determined not to be a mere spectator, Beerus joined the battle with renowned determination. His figure flashed with divine energy that rivaled Wiss's, creating a spectacle of light and shadow in space. The three powerful beings engaged in a cosmic dance, with flashes of divine and dark energy illuminating the vastness of the universe. Ryuk, without losing his smirk, took advantage of his transformation to increase his speed and strength, challenging the gods with every move. The combat reached new levels of complexity when Whis, in a flash of cunning, unleashed a divine teleportation technique. He moved at the speed of thought, appearing and disappearing at different points in space, keeping Ryuk on the defensive. Ugh, you can't dodge me forever, Whis. As Whis and Ryuk clashed in space, Beerus focused on channeling his divine energy. The Destroyer God sank into a meditative state, concentrating on unleashing his true power. Beerus' transformation was gradual but impactful. His figure was enveloped in a golden aura, 
and his eyes shone with the intensity of a star. Divine power flowed through him, manifesting in a form that only the mightiest gods could attain, allowing the grievous wound left by Ryuk to be healed. It's time to put an end to this. The reborn Beerus lunged towards Ryuk with unparalleled speed. Each blow he delivered was imbued with overwhelming divine energy. Ryuk, though powerful, was overwhelmed by the onslaught of the Destroyer God. Meanwhile, Whis continued his cosmic ballet, defying the laws of space and time with his speed and agility. Every move was calculated, every blow strategically executed. The battle reached its climax as Beerus and Whis coordinated, combining their attacks to create a symphony of divine energy that enveloped Ryuk. The pressure in the air became almost tangible, and the cosmos itself seemed to rumble with the intensity of the conflict. Do you have anything to say, Ryuk? Ryuk, gravely wounded but still defiant, let out a shrill laugh. His figure writhed as the dark energy tried to resist the overwhelming pressure of the gods. Ha 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 ha! This is not the end, gods. My master will be released, and his darkness will devour all. Beerus, showing no mercy, unleashed a sphere of concentrated divine energy and hurled it directly at Ryuk. The resulting explosion illuminated the space, dispelling the darkness that had lingered. Silence fell over the space as the gods watched the wreckage of the battle. Ryuk lay motionless, defeated, but not destroyed. His threat had been contained, at least for now. This is not over. We need to find out more about his master and any threat that may arise. Whis nodded, sharing the same determination. The reality of the danger that stalked the universe became more apparent, and the gods knew they had to prepare to face even greater challenges. The cosmic explosion that marked the end of the fierce battle dissipated into the vast space, leaving Whis and Beerus floating in momentary tranquility. As they regained their composure, a flash of gold announced the arrival of Daishenken, the high priest, who appeared before them with a serene but worried expression. I see you've dealt with the threat, dear Wiss and Beerus. Yes, father. Ryuk has been contained, at least for now. But this isn't the end, is it? Daishenken smiled wisely as he held in his hands a strange artifact, a glowing sphere that emanated in an energy like the one they felt during the battle. This is what I wanted to show you. It's known as the Sphere of Divine Containment, an ancient artifact capable of sealing beings of great power and darkness. Beerus and Wiss watched intently as Daishenken explained the function of the sphere and how it was used to keep the most dangerous entities in the universe at bay. This artifact has been kept in safekeeping for eons. It's only brought to light in extreme situations. The dark energy they felt came from one of these sealed entities, released by Ryuk's recklessness. Wiss and Beerus exchanged worried glances as they assimilated the information. Who are these sealed entities? They are beings from the distant past. Fallen gods and creatures whose thirst for power make them uncontrollable. The sphere of divine containment is our safeguard against their resurgence. So, Ryuk was one of them, and his master? His master is the devourer of worlds, an even more ancient and dangerous being. His release could jeopardize existence itself. The gravity of the situation hung heavy in the air as Daishenka continued to explain the importance of keeping the Sphere of Divine Containment safe and sealing Ryuk again. Now that Ryuk has been contained, it's crucial that he returns to his place of safe keeping. But we also need to get information from him. We need to know more about the Devourer of Worlds' plans and any threats that may arise. Beerus, Wiss, and Daishenken shared a determined look. The task was not complete. There is still work to be done. If interrogating Ryo could give us answers, we'll do so. But we must proceed with caution. The information we gathered will be essential to prepare for future threats. Also, we need to reinforce the security of the sphere of divine containment. Daishenken, with a nod of his head, showed his approval of the god's decision. Very well. Let us return to the realm of all and set preparations in motion. The safety of the universe depends on us. The three gods with the glowing sphere in hand teleported to the realm of all, ready to confront the shadows of the past and ensure the stability of the universe. The spheres of divine containment, now more than ever, became the beacon of hope amidst the darkness that threatened to emerge. 
Meanwhile on Earth, the Z warriors, divided into groups, scattered into the sky in the direction of the unknown presences they had sensed on the planet of the northern Kaiosama. In the air, they moved at impressive speeds, ready to face any threat that crossed their path. On Kaiosama's planet, Goku and Vegeta appeared thanks to teleportation scarring Kaiosama with serious and determined expressions. Kaiosama, who was waiting for them, welcomed them with nervous gestures. Goku, Vegeta, I'm glad you came so quickly. The information I have is crucial. We need to know what this artifact is and what threat it poses. We don't have time to waste. What do you know? Kaiosama nodded and let the Saiyans to his small home on the planet. Once inside, they unfolded an ancient scroll that revealed information about a mystical artifact known as the Cosmic Core of Containment. He explained that this artifact was used by the ancient gods to seal entities of great evil and power, preventing them from wreaking havoc in the universe. This artifact is so ancient that there are hardly any records of its creation. It was thought to be lost, but apparently all this time it was hidden on planet Earth. And how is it supposed to be sealed? Tell us at once. Kaiosama explained that the cosmic core of containment could be opened by a being of great power, but in doing so, the seal would be transferred to the first being it encountered. If the seal was not broken immediately, it would merge with that being granting it power, but also binding it to the duty of keeping the evil sealed. And how the heck did it end up in Goku's chest? That's the puzzling thing. It seems that this artifact shows Goku as its carrier. Goku, with an expression of astonishment, began to grasp the magnitude of the situation. He was now the bearer of an artifact containing an entity of indescribable evil. So you mean, I'm now responsible for keeping this evil under control? What an honor, Kakarot. It seems you've become the guardian of evil. But there is something else. The being sealed inside the urn is incredibly powerful. He's known as Bamut. The Devourer of Worlds it is an ancient entity that has consumed entire worlds. The gravity of the situation was reflected on the faces of Goku and Vegeta. Not only did they have to face the mysterious artifact in Goku's chest, but also the dark entity sealed within. Then we have an important task. We must keep Baomut under control and, at the same time, figure out how to free ourselves from this burden. Yes, make no mistake, Kakarot. If this threatens Earth, I'll not hesitate to stop you. Meanwhile on Earth, the Z warriors faced unusual pressure as they prepared for combat. Each group was ready to deal with the entities they had sensed at Bulma's house, which were minions of Baumut, the devourer of worlds. The dark energy surrounding these minions was intense, and the very air seemed to vibrate with their malevolent presence. The group of Krillin, Master Roshi, and Android 18 encountered one of Baumut's four minions standing on the ground humanoids with a black, malevolent aura. The Z Warriors prepared for the confrontation with Krillin, Android 18, and Master Roshi, adopting combat stances. In a chaotic dance of dark energy and flickering explosions, the confrontation between the Z Warriors and Baumut's henchmen unfolded on the cosmic stage of Earth's defense. Krillin, Android 18, and Master Roshi, three warriors of varying experience and skills, faced a dark menace that threatened to plunge the planet into an abyss of destruction. The stage was permeated with a tense atmosphere as the three warriors assumed combat stances, ready to defend the Earth against Baumut's henchmen, a being whose malevolent aura eclipsed even the intensity of the sun. I don't know who you are, but we'll not allow you to harm our planet! Krillin's words echoed in the air, charged with determination. Baumut's henchman, a humanoid with a black malevolent aura, advanced with ferocity, launching a dark attack. Krillin, in a display of amazing agility, dodged the attacks, moving like a gust of wind across the battlefield. Kaizen! In the blink of an eye, Krillin created his signature energy disc and launched it towards the henchmen. Kaizen spun furiously, cutting through the air as it headed towards its target. However, the henchman displayed unmatched skill as he dodged the spinning attack, moving with an agility that defied comprehension. The henchman counterattacked with a series of dark, swift strikes, but Krillin was unwilling to give up. With precise and quick movements, he blocked most of the attacks, responding with quick and precise counterattacks. 
combat dance between Krillin and the henchmen painted a picture of speed and skill, where each movement could change the tide of the battle. Meanwhile, Master Roshi, the aged warrior with vast experience in martial arts, watched the confrontation with a knowing smile. He adopted a firm posture, waiting for his moment to intervene. You've chosen the wrong man to fight. I've seen more battles than you can imagine. As Balmut's henchmen lunged towards him, Master Roshi moved with unique grace, dodging the attacks with precise movements and counterattacking with a series of energy blasts. The old man's experience and cunning proved to be a formidable challenge for the henchman, who was forced to deploy all his skills to confront the master. On the other hand, Android 18, the android warrior with formidable strength, advanced towards the henchman with determination. Her eyes glowed with an intense blue light as she unleashed her powerful android energy. Do not underestimate the strength of androids. With a quick wave of his hands, Android 18 launched a wave of energy towards the henchman. The latter, though impressed by the ferocity of the android warrior, showed no signs of recoiling. Instead, it lunged toward her with surprising speed, throwing dark blows that Android 18 dodged with cybernetic agility. The battle between Android 18 and the minion was a display of strength and speed, the bursts of energy lighting up the sky. Both fought with an intensity that could shake the foundations of the universe. Meanwhile, Android 18, a formidable warrior created by Dr. Giro, was ready to demonstrate her immense power. She charged her energy, her body radiating a red glow, and lunged towards the henchman with determination. Don't underestimate me, I'm stronger than you think. The henchman responded with a sudden surge of his dark aura, unleashing a surge of energy that pushed Android 18 back. The force of the impact created a shockwave kicking up dust and debris in its wake. The battle was intense. Every move had a purpose and every attack resonated with the Z-Warrior's determination to protect their home. Explosions of energy followed one after another, lighting up the battlefield like fireworks in the dark night of space. However, the true magnitude of the threat was yet to be fully revealed. This henchman was only one of four sent by Baumut and the fate of Earth depended on the ability of the Z-Warriors to pass this first test. On the horizon, the other three minions awaited their turn, ready to plunge into the fray and test their bravery and skills of Earth's defenders. The intensity of the battle increased with each moment, and while Krillin, Android 18, and Master Roshi fought against the henchmen, other groups of Z-Warriors faced similar challenges in different locations around the planet. The fate of the Earth hung in the delicate balance of the unfolding cosmic battle, and each warrior was determined to give everything for the survival of his home. While the first group of warriors were defending Earth on Kaiosama's planet in the small house, it was permeated with a tense atmosphere and solemnity as Goku, Vegeta, and Kaiosama were immersed in the gravity of the situation. The ancient scroll spread out on the table revealed the secrets of an ancient artifact and the weight now rested on Goku's shoulders. So you mean I'm now responsible for keeping this evil under control? The responsibility rested on Goku like a heavy mantle. The cosmic core of containment, that ancestral artifact, had chosen Goku as its carrier, and within it was Balmut, the devourer of worlds. The gravity of the situation was reflected in the eyes of the Saiyan, who was already mentally preparing himself for a colossal task ahead. What an honor, Kakarot. Seems you've become the guardian of evil. The irony of Vegeta's voice did not go unnoticed. While his words might have been sarcastic, the determination in his eyes indicated that, despite any jokes, they were in this together. But there's something else. The being inside the artifact is incredibly powerful. The information left Goku and Vegeta silent. Baumut, the name echoed in their minds like the distant echo of a coming storm. Consuming entire worlds was a threat they could not underestimate. Then we have an important task. We must keep Baumut under control and at the same time figure out how to free ourselves from this burden. The pact was sealed. Together, Goku and Vegeta would take on the challenge of containing Baumut and discovering a way to free themselves from the burden they now carried. The remaining question was how they would confront the dark entity that lay in Goku's chest. But before they could formulate a plan, a vibration in the air alerted them to the arrival of others. It seems your friends are in trouble. 
Go help them! Goku and Vegeta nodded in a gesture and understanding and, with serious expressions, headed for the door. With a mighty leap, they launched themselves into the sky, ready to join the battle raging on planet Earth. At the moment that Kaiosama gave the information to Goku and Vegeta, on Earth appeared another henchman of Balmut who met with the duo of Ten Shinhan. This henchman of Balmut seemed to be an expert in dark martial arts. He moved with supernatural agility, challenging the Z warriors with swift and lethal movements. Do not underestimate the strength of humans! Kikoho! Ten Shinhan launched his powerful Kikoho attack, creating an explosion of energy that enveloped Balmut's henchmen. This is no ordinary enemy. I must use my powers wisely. Chaos unleashing his magic, creating illusions and distractions to confuse Balmut's henchmen. The battle was unfolding on multiple levels, with the Z warriors fighting against this enemy who seemed to understand the combat arts in unexpected ways. At that moment, realizing that the power with which they were facing Balmut's henchmen was not enough to stop him, thanks to Chaos's distraction, they took the opportunity to try to escape. But they did not count on the great speed of their rival who, realizing that they wanted to escape, caught up with them, disappearing from the place where he was and appearing in front of them. At the precise moment in which he was about to eliminate Chaos and Ten Shinhan, two people appeared between them and their rival Goku and Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta, with their gazes fixed on Balmut's henchmen, shared a silent understanding. The gravity of the situation was clear on their faces, but there was no room for doubt. Ten Shinhan! Chaos! Go and warn the others about this threat! We need time to deal with this! We don't want them to get hurt because of us. Go! We'll take care of this. Ten Shinhan and Chaos nodded, recognizing the determination in the Saiyans' voices. Wasting no time, they sped away, leaving Goku and Vegeta facing their formidable opponent. Bamut's henchman, emanating overwhelming darkness, showed no signs of backing down. His eyes glowed with malice, aware of the battle ahead. The Z warriors were prepared to face any threat, and this would be no exception. It's clear that this won't be easy. That's what makes it exciting. Let's do it, Kakarot! Goku and Vegeta charged at Balmut's henchmen with impressive speed. At the moment when both warriors were fighting a battle that could change the fate of Earth, this being who presented himself as Balmut's henchman, this dark entity with a humanoid shape but a bird's head was going to be surprised by the abilities of the Saiyan warriors. In the middle of the combat, of all the show of strength between both warriors and this dark being, Takagami, with a confused face, but confident that his strength was far superior to that of these earthly warriors, thought, I'm amazed at the strength these earthly beings possess. I guess they deserve to know who'll kill them. Then at that moment, he told them, with a malevolent smile, he said, I've been surprised by warriors. That's why they deserve to know my name. I'm Takagami, sacred god of darkness, follower of the supreme god Baumud. Goku, very surprised of what he is hearing, said, More gods? This sounds very dangerous, and it's exciting. Bug, shut up! The life of this planet's at risk, and you get excited about a being that's very powerful. The speed of the combat accelerated as Goku and Vegeta pounced on Takagami. The energy in the air became dense, vibrating with the intensity of the impending confrontation. Takagami, with his dark aura, stood his ground, disdainfully watching the approaching Saiyans. Do you think you have a chance against the power of darkness? <laughs> Goku and Vegeta continued their advance, wasting no time in unnecessary words. In the blink of an eye, they were in front of Takagami unleashing a gale of blows. Takagami, with surprising agility, dodged many of the attacks, but some managed to land demonstrating the strength of the Saiyans. Don't underestimate the power of a Saiyan! Come on, God of Darkness, show us what you can do! Takagami responded to the challenge, unleashing his own fury. His speed and combat skills were amazing, deflecting the blows of Goku and Vegeta with subtle movements. The battle turned into a whirlwind of punches, kicks, and key blasts, lighting up the sky with flashes of light and darkness. Ha 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 ha! They're just insects in front of the power of eternal darkness! Goku and his base state and Vegeta, with their pride as the Saiyan Prince, continued to put pressure on Takagami. However, as the battle progressed, Takagami began to reveal more of his true power. His dark aura intensified, and his form subtly changed, revealing a transformation that increased his power exponentially. This can't be good. 
Goku always excited for a challenge at it. Vegeta, get ready. This is getting interesting. Takagami's increased power created an overwhelming pressure on the battlefield. His speed increased dramatically, and his strength eclipsed that of the Saiyans. However, Goku and Vegeta were not intimidated. With determination, they raised their own power of levels, taking the battle to new heights. The fighting continued with swift attacks and explosions shaking the battlefield. Goku and Vegeta, now in more advanced forms, kept up the pace, challenging Takagami at every turn. However, despite his efforts, the sacred god of darkness proved to be a formidable adversary. This is entertaining, but your resistance is useless. The darkness consumes everything. Goku and Vegeta, without giving up, exchanged determined glances. Vegeta, it's time to go further. Huh, of course, Kakarot. As Chaos and Ten Shin Han rushed to warn the other Z warriors, the confrontation between Goku, Vegeta, and Takagami entered a new level of intensity. The struggle for the fate of the universe was in full swing. A cosmic battle was raging on planet Earth, where darkness and light collided in a frantic dance of energy. Goku and Vegeta, the brave Saiyans, were facing Takagami, the Falcon, sacred god of darkness. The intensity of the combat resonated in the universe, and every movement threatened to tear reality itself apart. Takagami, who had increased his power, floated in the air with an imposing presence and dark aura. His eyes glowed with malice as he watched the Saiyans who stood firm prepare to defend their fate of the planet. In response to their enemy's increased power, Goku and Vegeta channeled their key to the maximum, raising their power to the Super Saiyan. Vegeta! This guy's strong, but that only means that this fight will be even better! Huh, of course Kakarot, this is our time to shine. The planet Earth vibrated with the energy released by the three contenders. The distant stars seemed to pale before the magnitude of the conflict. The clouds were dissipated by such a demonstration of power. Takagami, with his increased speed, lunged at Goku with a darkness-laden punch. Goku, using his elasticity and quickness, dodged gracefully, leaving a trail of flashes around him by the speed at which Takagami was lashing out with his nigh-speed nice punches. Vegeta, with a burst of key, stepped between Goku and Takagami, blocking an attack that would have been devastating his fellow Saiyan. The shockwave from the collision sent debris in all directions. I expected nothing less from you, sacred god of darkness. Takagami defiantly unleashed a series of dark blasts towards Goku and Vegeta. The Saiyans responded with perfect timing, countering each attack with precise strikes and energy waves. The scene looked like a combat symphony, where every movement was choreographed with divine precision. Goku, with a twinkle in his eye, concentrated his energy on his hands. A bluish sphere of energy began to form, growing in size and luminosity. Vegeta, observing the familiar technique, smiled as he recognized the power that Goku was summoning. Ka -me -ha -me -ha! A colossal energy wave fired by Goku shot through the sky like lightning, hitting Takagami squarely. However, the darkness was absorbing the energy, and the Falcon emerged unscathed, laughing disdainfully. Is that all you have, Saiyan? While Goku was recovering from the effort of his attack, Vegeta launched himself at Takagami with supersonic speed. His fist slammed into the Dark God, creating a shockwave that shook the air. However, Takagami responded with a burst of energy that sent Vegeta backwards. Ah! Damn, this guy's stronger than I thought. Goku, recovering, joined the battle again. Both Saiyans, aware that they were facing a formidable enemy, decided that it was time to take the fight to the next level. Vegeta, how about we show what we can really do? Of course, Kakarot. Let's do it. Goku and Vegeta began to accumulate energy around them. The atmosphere was charged with an intensity of their ki as they unleashed their advanced forms. Goku transformed into the Super Saiyan Blue, while Vegeta assumed his evolved form, the Evolved Blue Super Saiyan. Are they taking each other seriously now? Goku and Vegeta, with their new forms, advanced towards Kakagami with renewed determination. The speed and strength of the Saiyans were now incomparable. The impacts resounded like cosmic thunder, creating a symphony of destruction in the sky. The battle became even more intense. Goku and Vegeta, coordinating their movements, attacked Takagami with an impressive combination of techniques and melee attacks. The Falcon, despite its power, was overwhelmed by the ferocity of the Saiyans. Ka -me -ha -me -ha! 
final flash! The bursts of energy, one blue and one golden, converged into a titanic explosion that engulfed Takagami. Light and darkness mixed in a burst of dazzling colors. However, when the explosion dissipated, Takagami emerged once more, his form slightly battered, but his determination intact. His power is awesome, but I'm a god. The darkness cannot be defeated so easily. Goku and Vegeta, without giving up, continued the offensive. The speed of his combat reached levels that defied comprehension. Punches and kicks were exchanged in a split second, creating a glow of cosmic collisions. Big Bane attack! K.O. Ken 20 times! The energy exploded again, shaking the sky with its fury. However, Takagami, with his divine resistance, withstood the attacks. The battle raged across the cosmos, with the warriors disappearing and reappearing in flashes of light and shadow. In the middle of the struggle, Goku and Vegeta began to feel an overwhelming pressure. Takagami's darkness seemed to expand, defying even the limits of the most powerful Saiyans. Reality itself was twisting under the influence of dark energy. This darkness is <clears throat> incredibly strong. We can't back down now, Kakarot. We must get over this. Both Saiyans raised their powers even more. The fight reached a new peak of intensity. The Saiyan was exploding like fireworks in the vastness of the night sky, lighting up the darkness with flashes of determination and defiance. Takagami, at the epicenter of the storm, smiled ominously. Now you'll see the true power of eternal darkness. The universe trembled as the battle reached its climax. The warriors were fighting for the fate of everything they knew. And the question that lingered in space was whether the light of the Saiyans could overcome the darkness of the sacred god. The planet Earth rumbled with the intensity of the cosmic battle. Goku and Vegeta, drenched in sweat, maintained their advanced forms as they prepared for Takagami's next assault. Darkness was emanating from his figure, but something seemed out of place. The Dark God's skin had a grayish hue, as if he had not yet completed the possession of its wearer. Takagami, with a guttural laugh, seemed to notice the perplexity in the Saiyans' expressions. Surprise, Saiyans! I've not yet revealed all my power! Goku and Vegeta exchanged puzzled looks. Something was not right, and both warriors felt it. At that moment, Takagami convulsed. A new form shook, as if he was fighting against something. An invisible force seemed to pull at him from within. No! I haven't taken complete control yet! Suddenly, a burst of dark energy enveloped Takagami, hiding him from view. The Saiyans were on guard, prepared for any surprise. Their energy in the air became denser, as if the cosmos itself was on the verge of transformation. What's going on? Before they could form any more questions, the dark energy dispersed, revealing Takagami's true form. However, what they saw took their breath away. At the moment of arriving at his true form, he let himself see the body he was possessing. This body was Yamcha's. Once the warrior saw that, Takagami completed his bird-headed human form. And now the true form of the sacred god of destruction was clearly revealed. The falcon's head was clearly shown, with a defined musculature but a thin body, wearing blue Egyptian clothes with gold bracelets and a gold necklace. Huge wings which disappeared and appeared at their whim. Now, Takagami had something going for him. He was playing against the Saiyan warriors. Not only should he defeat them, but they should also avoid harming Yamcha. That's what Yamcha looks like! Takagami's rumbling laughter filled the space. Now completely in possession of Yamcha's body, the Dark God was displaying a malevolent smile. That's right, Saiyans. This weak body belongs to me now. Vegeta gritted his teeth furiously. Damn it! How dare you possess one of us? It's not just one Saiyan. Soon all of you will become Baumut puppets. The reality of the situation at Goku and Vegeta, but the force of the cosmic impact, the dark entity they were facing was not only a dark god, but also had the power of possessing earthling warriors. Yamcha, now inside the sacred god of darkness, did not have any sign of consciousness. The god had taken control of his being completely. Ha 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 ha! There's no escape. Balmud will be released, and this universe will fall into eternal darkness. Goku and Vegeta shared a determined look. They knew the threat was even greater now. Not only were they fighting a dark god, they were also faced the possibility of losing their friends and allies in this fight. Vegeta, 
We have to find a way to free Yamcha and stop Takagami. Of course, Kakarot. But first, we have to deal with this dark god. The battle continued, but now the situation was more desperate. Takagami, with Yamcha's body, unleashed an unstoppable fury. The Saiyans struggled not only against eternal darkness, but also against the weight of facing one of their own companions. Explosions of energy lit up the sky, but the inner struggle of Goku and Vegeta was equally intense. Every blow, every burst of ki resonated with the promise of freeing Yamcha and saving the universe from the threat of Baumut. But Takagami wasn't going to give up so easily. Do you think you could beat one of the World Eater's henchmen? The dark energy intensified in the ultimate form of the sacred god of darkness. Now, the freedom to be able to use all his power launched relentless attacks. Goku and Vegeta, with their advanced forms, were fighting with all their might, but the darkness had a firm grip. The struggle dragged on. Every moment seemed like an eternity. Yamcha, although he was just a contender for Takagami, at one point during the fight showed signs of pain on his face. It was as if his very essence was fighting against the darkness that was consuming her. Yamcha, hold on! Let's get you out of this! But Goku's words were lost in the storm. Takagami, with a manacle laugh, continued his assault. The Earth, witness of this cosmic conflict, trembled before the magnitude of the confrontation between light and darkness. Somewhere far away, Chaos and Ten Shinhan, after alerting the other Z warriors about the threat, returned to the battlefield. Seeing the situation, Ten Shinhan's face filled with fury as Chaos clenched his fist determinedly. Takagami, I'll make sure you pay for this! Both warriors joined the fight, but even with their abilities, facing a dark god who possessed one of his own would not be so easy. The battle turned into a desperate struggle to face Yamcha and stop Baumut before he was released. During the chaos, Goku and Vegeta shared a look of determination. The darkness could be powerful, but the light of the Saiyans would shine even in the darkest moments. The battle for the fate of the universe was far from over, and Earth's heroes were ready to face any challenges that stood in their way. Taking a trip to the past, one day before the strange artifact was impregnated into Goku's chest, after rescuing his son Goten, Yamcha, oblivious to the imminent danger that was coming, was exploring an ancient Egyptian pyramid during an archaeological expedition. The atmosphere was charged with mystery and the promise of amazing discoveries. Deep inside the pyramid, Yamcha stumbled upon an ancient artifact that was glowing with a dim light. It was an Egyptian bracelet decorated with intricate hieroglyphs. Fascinated by her beauty and attracted by an inexplicable force, Yamcha could not resist and placed the bracelet on his wrist. The moment the bracelet touched his skin, a strange sensation enveloped Yamcha. It was not painful or threatening, but rather captivating. An ancestral connection was established between the earthly warrior and the Egyptian artifact. What Yamcha didn't know was that this ar artifact what Yamcha didn't know was that this artifact contained an ancient power linked to the age of gods and legends. As the light from the bracelet merged with Yamcha, an ancient present awoke. It was the essence of an ancient god that was lying asleep inside the artifact. However, this being was neither malevolent nor benevolent. It was simply an, an ancestral force seeking to join a mortal existence, or at least that was what Yamcha felt at that moment. The god by merging with Yamcha granted him abilities and knowledge beyond his comprehension. Yamcha filled, felt with a strength and connection to the story itself. The fusion, although puzzling at first, resulted in a unique symbiosis between the earthly warrior and the divine entity. Yamcha didn't know what the bracelet actually was. Returning to the battle, every moment became more challenging for Goku and Vegeta and the earthly warriors. Takagami, now completely liberated, unleashed a destructive force that tested even the most powerful Saiyans. In an effort to turn the tide of the battle, Ten Shinhan and Chaos joined the fight. Both warriors, aware of the threat possessed by Takagami, threw themselves into the fray bravely. His unique skills and determination added a new dynamic to the conflict, but even with his intervention, the darkness persisted. Ten Shinhan, keep the pressure on. We cannot allow this darkness to take over our world. Ten Shinhan nodded, concentrating his energy on coordinated attacks with Goku and Vegeta. Despite their combined efforts, Takagami remained a relentless adversary. As the battle reached its peak, Goku and Vegeta, exhausted but without losing their determination, shared a look of mutual understanding. They knew they needed an extra power to face Takagami at his finest. Instantly, an idea crossed their minds of the Saiyan's fusion. Vegeta, 
I know it's not something you prefer, but I think it's our only option. Huh. I don't like to admit it, Kakarot, but I agree with you. If we want to stop this monster, we need all the power we can get. Both warriors assume the necessary postures to perform the fusion dance. The energy of Goku and Vegeta are intertwined in a brilliant flash, and within seconds, an entirely new warrior emerged. Gogeta in his base form, the supremely powerful fusion of the two Saiyans. It seems the occasion requires it. Now, Takagami, get ready. So you think a ridiculous fusion will be able to stand up to my power? Gogeta rushed towards Takagami with amazing speed. The matchup that followed was an unmatched display of skills. Gogeta dodged Takagami's attacks with grace, fighting back with overwhelming force. However, the darkness that enveloped the Dark God proved to be a formidable challenge. During the intense battle, Ten Shinhan and Chaos continued to bravely fight, but the price of a confrontation was already becoming apparent. Takagami, taking advantage of the distraction, launched a devastating attack that left Ten Shinhan and Chaos seriously injured. Goku and Vegeta, seeing their companions in danger, felt a surge of rage. Gogeta redoubled his efforts, attacking with renewed ferocity. However, Takagami, aware of the situation, diverted his attention to Ten Shinhan and Chaos. Feeling the despair, Saiyans. Soon this world will witness its end. Goku and Vegeta, full of rage and determination, increased their speed. They knew they needed to do something before Takagami carried out his threats. The battle reached its climax when Gogeta launched a massive attack on Takagami, seeking to break his resistance. However, the darkness surrounding Takagami intensified, revealing a surprise resistance. It was then that Ten Shinhan and Chaos, still on the ground, exchanged a determined look. They knew that whatever they had to do to give Gogeta a chance to defeat Takagami. Goku, Vegeta, you need... time. I'll take care of holding this monster. I'll come with you, Ten Shinhan. Together we'll be the barrier they need. Goku and Vegeta, although reluctant to lose their friends, went at full speed to avoid what they had in mind. Don't do it, Ten Shinhan! Chaos! Ten Shinhan and Chaos stood up, ignoring the pain coursing through their bodies. With determination, they faced Takagami, resisting his attacks with all their might. Gogeta, seeing the situation, understood the magnitude of the sacrifice they were making. We cannot disappoint this sacrifice. We have to win this. While Ten Shinhan and Chaos bravely fought Takagami, Gogeta continued his assault with the intensity intact. The battle was taking place on two fronts, with the Earth Warriors sacrificing themselves to provide the necessary opening. Goku and Vegeta, as he approached, their hearts were filled with sorrow and gratitude towards Ten Shinhan and Chaos. Gogeta, with supersonic speed, approached the scene where Ten Shinhan and Chaos were bravely facing Takagami. His gaze reflected the mixture of determination and regret, knowing that the sacrifices of his teammates were the key to victory. Hold on a little longer, guys. Let's put an end to this. The Saiyan fusion advanced towards Takagami, who, upon seeing Gogeta's arrival, stopped attacking Ten Shinhan and Chaos to confront the fused warrior. The intensity of the battle reached a new level, with attacks and counterattacks echoing across the battlefield. Ten Shinhan, with his remaining strength, took advantage of that distraction to hold Takagami with all his strength, preventing him from moving freely. His face showed determination and resignation at the same time. Chaos, this is your chance! Make every second I hold this monster worth it! Chaos, next to Ten Shinhan, nodded weakly. His body showed the ravages of the battle, but his eyes were shining with all the will to do the duty. Ten Shinhan is right, Gogeta. The light will always prevail over the darkness. Remember that! Goku! Vegeta! Take care of our world! This is our last act! At that moment, Chaos accumulated an immense amount of energy to sacrifice himself. Gogeta, who was very close, were hit by the shock wave of the explosion. Gogeta, recovering from the impact, looked at the place where his companions were with solemnly. Your sacrifice will not be in vain, I promise! After what happened, Gogeta raised his head and with an uncontrollable anger increased his ki in such a way that he made the battlefield rumble, making the stones that were in the place fly, making Takagami retreat only with the gusts of air that expanded from his being. In a panning from head to toe, we managed to see Gogeta's transformation in Super Saiyan Blue Phase 4, which showed the essence of Ozaru as a kind of aura in blue color and a more controlled but much more powerful version, a transformation never seen since they were not able to coordinate their powers to be able to reach said transformation. 
as Gogeta's energy transformed into a surprising and controlled version of Super Saiyan Blue Stage 4, a brilliant blue essence of Ozaru manifested around him, revealing unparalleled potency. The cosmic landscape trembled before the magnitude of this new form. Goku and Vegeta, witness of this unique transformation, were filled with amazement and determination. It was evident that Gogeta was reaching a level of power never seen before, fusing the essence of Super Saiyan Blue with Ozaru's formidable presence flawlessly. Gogeta, in his new form, turned an intense gaze towards Takagami, whose expression of confidence was overshadowed by surprise. The battle, far from having come to an end, was just beginning in this new phase. The universe was waiting for the outcome of this epic confrontation, where light and darkness collided in a cosmic dance. The promise of a new dawn loomed on the horizon, but the price of triumph was uncertain. Gogeta floated in the sky, surrounded by the imposing energy of his new form. The stars seemed to pale before the intensity of his blue radiance, as Takagami recovered from the initial impact and adopted a defensive posture. What kind of transformation is this? This is the power of those who fight for something greater than themselves! With a flash, Gogeta disappeared, appearing in front of Takagami in the blink of an eye. The clash of their fists created shockwaves that shook the battlefield. Gogeta's speed and strength were unmatched, surpassing even Takagami's ability to anticipate his blows. Gogeta and Takagami exchanged blows and energy blasts at breakneck speed. Each impact resounded like cosmic thunder, creating an epic symphony on planet Earth. Your attempt to revive your so-called gods ends here, Takagami. <laughs> but you're a bug in the face of the greatness of my power. In an instant, Gogeta unleashed a burst of concentrated energy, enveloping Takagami in a whirlwind of light and force. When the light dissipated, Takagami emerged unharmed, but with a more serious expression. Interesting, but not enough. The battle was reaching cosmic levels with ripples of energy spreading across the far reaches of the universe. Meanwhile, the other Z warriors watched the sky, appreciating Gogeta's great power of display and Takagami's resilience and viciousness. The roar of battle echoed in every corner of the universe. Gogeta and Takagami, wrapped in an endless dance of energy, continued their titanic confrontation. Space twisted and trembled under the influence of their powers, creating distortions itself. Bursts of energy expanded like lightning, illuminating the darkness of the night sky with dazzling flashes. Each blow between the two contenders seemed to release an explosion of energy that spread in concentric waves, setting the frantic pace of the cosmic battle. Away from the battlefield, the others watched in anguish and admiration. Bulma, with a mixture of fear and hope in her eyes, clung to the hope that Gogeta would prevail. Come on, Gogeta, you must win for all of us. Meanwhile, in the battlefield, Gogeta and Takagami continued their fierce exchange. Determination burned in Gogeta's eyes, while Takagami maintained a defiant smile, though his expression hid a growing unease. This is for the price you pay for defying the peace of the universe! With a swift movement, Gogeta vanished and reappeared behind Takagami, launching an energy-charged punch straight at his back. But Takagami, anticipating, quickly spun around and blocked the attack with the dark energy shield. Haha! <laughs> is that all you got? In response, Gogeta intensified his assault, unleashing a continuous flurry of punches and kicks. Each impact resounded like thunder. But Takagami, though outmatched in speed, resisted with his dark power, countering the attacks with deft movements. During the scuttle, Takagami took advantage of the prevalent moment of openness and opened up a launched energy bolt straight for Gogeta's chest. The resulting explosion shook the universe and Gogeta was thrown backwards, leaving a trail of blue energy. Is that all hope can do? Gogeta recovered quickly, stood up with determination. The glow of his transformation increased even more. This is far from over. The battle continued, leading them again to display an ever-increasing amount of power. In this fury, Gogeta unleashed power that defied the laws of the universe, and Takagami, despite his arrogance, began to show signs of concern. The tension was palpable. The Z warriors felt the intensity of the confrontation, even when they were a long distance away from where the battle for the future of the planet was taking place. Piccolo was seriously watching, calculating every move and thinking if at some point this battle, which was far from over, would be a favorable outcome. Piccolo, in his thoughts, Goku, Vegeta, we trust you. 
You must win this battle! The battle reached a new climax when Gogeta and Takagami met at an eminent point in the battle. The energy emanated from them, illuminating the vastness of the dark sky, creating a dazzling spectacle of colors and flashes. You cannot escape darkness! Darkness will never prevail over light! You're a fool if you think your light can eclipse my power! Suddenly, a voice echoed in Gogeta's mind, a familiar but distant voice. Gogeta, do not underestimate your enemy. Truth lies within strength. The transmission abruptly cut off, leaving Gogeta bewildered. Before he could reflect on it, however, Takagami lunged towards him with surprising speed, unleashing a series of punches and kicks that left Gogeta struggling to keep up. At that moment, a fleeting image flashed through Gogeta's mind, a vision of his loved ones, of his purpose, and the responsibility he carried on his shoulders. The energy of the transformation fanned, and Gogeta, with newfound determination, struck back with renewed ferocity. This is the limit of your tyranny, Takagami! Ha 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 ha! The limit's up to you, Gogeta, and your limit is my power! Suddenly, the sky around him fragmented, and multiple distorted versions of Takagami emerged from the dimensional rifts, each with a malevolent grin. You cannot defeat me, Gogeta! I am eternal! I'm a god! You may be powerful, but I'm not alone in this! The battle reached a new intensity as multiple distorted incarnations of Takagami surrounded Gogeta. Each emanated a dark energy that defied the laws of the universe. The air itself seemed to vibrate with the pressure of their combined presences. At that precise moment, Goku and Vegeta's fusion had come to an end due to the amount of power they had used in order to stand up to Takagami. Goku and Vegeta, although they had returned to their individual forms after the fusion, knew that the key by defeating Takagami lay in perfect unity and coordination. Vegeta, we're in this together. Let's give all our power to be able to confront him so we can free Yamcha from this so-called god. Yes, Kakarot, this insect will not defeat us. The Z Warriors watched in amazement, aware that the fate of the universe hung in the balance. Piccolo analyzed this situation, looking for any weaknesses that could be exploited. The others prepared to act if the opportunity presented itself. Goku and Vegeta, now separated their fusion as Gogeta, faced Takagami with determination in their eyes. The dark presence of the supposed god loomed over them. But the Saiyans were determined to free Yamcha and put an end to the threat he posed. Vegeta! We need to coordinate our attacks! We've always been stronger when we fight together! For once, I agree with you, Kakarot. This insect will pay for what he did. The two Saiyans lunged towards Takagami, attacking with a combination of punches and key blasts. Takagami, though powerful, was momentarily overwhelmed by the timing of the two warriors. However, his sinister laugh echoed across the battlefield. Your union will change nothing! My power is unlimited! Goku and Vegeta exchanged glances, realizing that the situation was more serious than they had imagined. Takagami unleashed a wave of dark energy that sent them flying, but they quickly recovered, ready to continue the fight. The Z Warriors watched with concern. Gohan, though a bit intimidated by Takagami's power, maintained his unwavering determination. Piccolo, with his keen intelligence, pointed out a possible weakness. It seems his power is linked to some source. We must find a way to break that connection. Goten and Trunks, who had arrived along with Gohan, eager to join the battle, looked at their parents with concern. However, Piccolo stopped them. Guys, we need a plan before we launch into battle. Your strength will be crucial at the right time. While the Z-Warriors thought of a plan, Goku and Vegeta continued their fierce assault against Takagami. Every time it seemed they were about to defeat him, his power increased and the evil emanating from him intensified. <laughs> Your resistance is useless. My power thrives on despair and suffering. Then we must find a way to change that. Vegeta, we need to attack together, but with a strategy. You're finally thinking clearly, Kakarot. Let's do it. The two Saiyans coordinating their movements executed a series of synchronized attacks. Although Takagami was defending himself skillfully, he began to show signs of discomfort. The connection between his power and the external source seemed to be faltering. At that instant, Piccolo noticed the opportunity. Now is the time. Gohan, wait for the opening we'll give you so you can attack. Goten, Trunks, follow me on my signal. Gohan nodded, conveying a look of confidence to his friends. 
Goten and Trunks prepare to act on Piccolo's directions. Everyone, let's send our energies to Goku and Vegeta. We must strengthen their connection and weaken Takagami's source of power. The Z Warriors gathered their energies and, with a coordinated effort, sent a stream of ki skyward. Goku and Vegeta, sensing the surge of power, seized the opportunity. They're doing it! Come on, Vegeta! The connection between Goku, Vegeta, and the Z Warriors created a unique synergy. Energy flowed through them, strengthening their resolve and weakening Takagami's external source of power. This can't be happening! The darkness surrounding Takagami began to dissipate due to the large amount of energy they were receiving from their friends. Piccolo, Gohan, Goten, and Trunks, observing the battle, noticed the opportunity to intervene. Now, guys, let's go! Goten and Trunks took flight into the sky where Goku and Vegeta were, joining the fight against Takagami. With the energy of the Z Warriors strengthening the connection between Goku and Vegeta, the real battle was about to begin. The fusion of powers of the Saiyans between father and son created an explosion of energy that enveloped Takagami. The fight intensified, but now, with hope and determination as their allies, Goku, Vegeta, Goten, and Trunks were ready to face the Dark God and free the universe from his evil domain. The burst of energy that enveloped Takagami reverberated throughout the universe. The fusion of the powers of Goku, Vegeta, and his sons created a symphony of forces, illuminating the sky with a brilliant radiance that defied the darkness Takagami had tried to impose. Takagami, enveloped in the luminescence of the combined energy, struggled to maintain his composure. The connection between his power and the source of his power, Yamcha, was weakening with every second, and his sinister laugh began to turn into growls of frustration. We're making progress, Vegeta! Yes, but let's not let our guard down. It's not over. As the Saiyans continued their coordinated offensive, Goten and Trunks and their Super Saiyan forms joined the battle. The pressure on Takagami intensified, as he now faced not only the two adult Saiyans, but also that of his sons. The coordination between them was impressive, and every move was backed by the combined strength of the Z Warriors. Dad! Vegeta! We're here to help! Let's show this guy that the Saiyan family is unstoppable! The trio of Saiyans, with their different levels of expertise and abilities, formed a united front against Takagami. The battle was getting more and more intense with bursts of energy and flurries of attacks lighting up space like a celestial spectacle. Piccolo, Gohan, Krillin, and the others channeled their energies to strengthen the connection between the Saiyans and, at the same time, searched for weaknesses in Takagami's defense. We must keep the pressure on, and look for any opportunity to unbalance Takagami. Dad! Vegeta! Goten! Trunks! We all trust you! Let's defeat this enemy together! In space, the synergy between the Saiyans reached its peak. Goku and Vegeta, with the energy of their sons and the Z Warriors, fused their attacks in an amazing display of power. Takagami, despite his resistance, began to give ground. Ugh! This is not possible! I'm a god! I cannot be defeated! The connection between his power and the external source was on the verge of collapse. The Saiyans, sensing Takagami's weakness, redoubled their efforts. Goten, Trunks, guided by Piccolo's strategy, attacked from unexpected angles, while Goku and Vegeta continued their frontal assault. Piccolo noticed a key opportunity. Now, Gohan, it's your time! Gohan, in his final form ready to take advantage of the opportunity, concentrated his energy and launched himself into the confrontation. With surprising speed, he joined the fight alongside Goku, Vegeta, Goten, and Trunks. Let's finish this, Dad! The symphony of energy between the Z Warriors and the Saiyans reached its climax. Takagami, beset on all sides, struggled to stand. And the skies erupted in an explosion of light and darkness as the heroes joined forces to confront the Dark God. The battle reached its climax, and every move decided the fate of the universe. The Z Warriors from Earth watched with eagerness and hope, knowing that victory was within reach, but also aware that the final fight was yet to come. With the Saiyans and the Z Warriors facing Takagami in a cosmic confrontation. However, amidst the chaos of battle, a small distraction allowed Takagami to strike back with furiosity. Goten and Trunks, focused on following Piccolo's strategy, attacked from different angles. However, in a moment of minimal distraction, Takagami seized the opportunity and launched a surprise counterattack. With quick and precise movements, the Dark God managed to evade Goten and Trunks' attacks 
countering them with punches and energy blasts. Ha ha ha! Your efforts are useless, children! I'm the all-consuming darkness! Goten and Trunks, though agile and powerful, found themselves in a precarious situation. Takagami, with his speed and cunning, left the young Saiyans struggling to keep up. We have to protect them! Takagami's concentration of power is increasing. We need to regroup and find a strategy to counter his moves. Meanwhile, in the sky, Goten and Trunks, despite the setbacks, continue to fight bravely. They tried to coordinate their attacks, but Takagami's speed and cunning proved to be a formidable challenge. Trunks, we have to stay focused! I know, but this guy's stronger than I imagined! In an unexpected twist, Takagami launched a blast of dark energy that hit Goten and Trunks, leaving them badly injured. Both Saiyans fell backwards with obvious signs of exhaustion and pain. Goten! Trunks! This damned dark god! The adult Saiyans intensified their assault, determined to avenge their momentary fall of their sons. Takagami, however, taking advantage of the confusion and despair that gripped the Z warriors, rejoiced in his newly strengthened power. This is how the heroes of the universe give up. They may fight, but in the end, darkness will always prevail. The result was becoming even more tense. The Z warriors, though determined, were facing the reality that their fight was far from over. Goten and Trunks, wounded but not defeated, were struggling to recover and rejoin the battle. We need a new approach. Takagami's strength increases with each passing moment. We'll protect Goten and Trunks. We'll not let the darkness prevail. The battle, now more critical than ever, was plunging into a desperate confrontation where the survival of the universe hung in the balance. Gohan, observing the critical situation of his brother Goten and Trunks, could not contain the fury that burned within him. A flash of anger crossed his eyes, and his energy rose to levels that would leave even the most experienced Saiyans dumbfounded. He lunged towards Takagami with shocking speed, ignoring any concern for his own safety. With this price, you'll pay for hurting my family! His speed and furiosity impressed everyone on the battlefield. Every blow he delivered carried with it a pent-up rage of a protective brother. Takagami, though initially surprised, adapted to the intensity of Gohan's attacks. Do you think your anger can stop me? I'm going to protect my family and the entire universe from your darkness! The battle between Gohan and Takagami unleashed an energy storm in space. Goku and Vegeta watched in awe and fear as the conflict reached levels that defied comprehension. Despite their determination, they realized they were facing a power beyond anything they had faced before. This kid, his power is amazing! We can't let Gohan fight alone. We must support him! As Gohan continued his relentless assault, Takagami showed a significant improvement in his defensive ability. Every blow was met with inhuman prowess. The battle reached a point where the universe itself seemed to be on the verge of collapse. The epic confrontation between Gohan and Takagami pushed the Saiyan warrior to the limit of his abilities. Despite Gohan's bravery and skill, the Dark God, with unmatched cunning and speed, found an opening in his defense. With a graceful twist, Takagami unleashed a ripping attack, a blast of dark energy that sliced through the air with a malevolent precision. Gohan, surprised by the speed and ferocity of the attack, barely had time to react. The energy wave hit Gohan full on, enveloping him in an explosion of light and darkness. The force of the impact threw Goku's eldest son backwards, causing him to stagger, desperately struggling to stay on his feet. The dark energy left its mark on Gohan's body, marking him with deep, tearing wounds. Gah! This can't be so strong! Takagami, with a sinister smile, hovered in the air, observing the result of his devastating attack. The black energy around him seemed to vibrate with satisfaction as Gohan tried to recover. This is the power you praise so much. You're no match for me, Gohan. Goku and Vegeta, witnessing the scene from a distance, gritted their teeth helplessly. The situation was becoming more critical with each passing moment. Goten and Trunks, still injured but recovering, were prepared to rejoin the fight. Gohan! This damned, we can't let this continue! Goten and Trunks, sensing the urgency of the situation, approached Gohan to help him. Despite his own injuries, determination shone in his eyes. Brother, are you alright? Yes, but we need a new approach. 
We're not going to let this guy get away with this! Meanwhile, Piccolo and the other Z Warriors were also assessing the situation, looking for any opportunity to change the course of the battle. The pressure on them was mounting, and the need to find an effective strategy was becoming more apparent. We have to work together. Gohan, can you keep fighting? Gohan nodded, ignoring the pain coursing through his body. His determination had not doled on the contrary. Takagami's imminent threat stoked it. I can't give up, but we need a strategy. Something that could surprise him. Surprise him, you say? As the Z-Warriors immersed themselves in strategy to counter Takagami, a small distraction took over the battlefield. Goten and Trunks, aware of the need of a different approach, exchanged determined glances. Without saying a word, they assumed the familiar fusion dance stance. The other warriors, immersed in their tactics, barely noticed the sudden disappearance of Goten and Trunks as they performed the fusion. The energy around them condensed into a brilliant flash that revealed Gotenx, Super Saiyan, the powerful fusion of the two young Saiyans. Ready to give this guy a surprise! With impressive speed, Gotenx launched himself towards Takagami, who was momentarily startled by the new presence on the battlefield. Gotenx, with his characteristic air of self-sufficiency, began to unleash a series of swift and agile attacks, challenging the Dark God with renewed energy. Here I come! Takagami, however, far from being intimidated, smiled sinisterly. With a casual gesture, he deflected Gotenx's attacks as if toying with him. Is that all you've got, you little fused insect? Gotenx persisted, intensifying his attacks, trying to find an opening in Takagami's defense. However, the Dark God, with a graceful move, countered each blow with ease. Come on! It can't be! In the moment of distraction, Takagami took advantage of the situation. With impressive speed, he launched a blast of dark energy that enveloped Gotenks before he could react. The resulting explosion threw Gotenks backwards, knocking him to the ground unconscious and disfigured. Gotenks! This is worse than we thought. Takagami, now more confident of his superiority, hovered in the air glaring at the defeated warriors. Goten and Trunks, still unconscious, lay on the ground as Takagami revealed in his moment of victory. Ha 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 ha! Is this all you offer, Z Warriors? Your desperation only increases my power. With the outlook darkened by Gotenks' momentary defeat, attention turned to Gohan, who, badly wounded but driven by an inner strength, began to radiate intense energy. The pain in his body seemed to fuel his determination, and a wild golden glow enveloped as his key reached never before seen levels. In the blink of an eye, Gohan transformed into Super Saiyan Phase 3, a form of awesome power that surprised even Takagami. Gohan's hair grew out of control, his muscles swelled, and his expression reflected a mixture of pain and fierce determination. What is this? A new trick? Gohan, with a wild roar, launched himself towards Takagami with shocking speed. The force of his blows and the intensity of his attacks shook the battlefield, creating a storm of energy around him. The conflict between light and darkness took on a new dimension as Gohan challenged the limits of his own power. You're going to pay for what you've done! Well guys, this is all for today's chapter. I hope you liked it and it was to your liking. Now don't forget to leave your powerful like Supreme God level, comment and subscribe. Now without further ado, see you in a new video. Until next time.